Alrighty. So, last time in Renaissance. Having concluded their business underground for the foreseeable future, the party returned to Gladham. They decided to stop by the Andralos Copes uh, Beer Garden Brewery to touch base with Riley, and there they learned about Riley's friend, an artist named Lee Barris, whose tools had gone missing some time ago. The party decided to follow up on this lead in the morning and made their way back to the resort for the night, though a handful of them still had some business to conduct after dark. John snuck back out to the copes and attempted to make a move on Riley after her shift ended, but despite her interest, the nervous girl drank too much and called the night early. Burberry, on a whim, decided to seek out a shrine to Coor if he could find one, and found a small backyard gathering of devotees to while away the night with. And Aloran decided to do a little partying at the Wet House, the massive dockside tavern and in, inn in, uh, there in town, where she happened to cross Adlar. They talked for a time of the jungles and creatures of the island, and Aloran arranged for the party to meet with him come morning, though he requested it be earlier than not. So it was that the party woke bright and early, set about their business for the day. They quickly met with and concluded their business with Adlar. They spoke with Lee and began their investigation of the missing tools, only to find curious, disjointed clues. Mysterious little footprints, strange scents trailing uh, at erratic intervals, and locate optic spells converging on an abandoned stone tower at the edge of town, one that apparently belonged to the local gate watch garrison. The party set about inspecting the tower and sent a Lauren inside as a tiny spider. Inside, she discovered the basement was filled with coins and numerous other, val out val other valuables, oof, stumbled there, uh, all guarded by a group of strange humanoid creatures, large and small. So we are picking up here. The party is standing outside the front door of the tower, still locked out. Aloran is a tiny spider, clinging to the ceiling of the door frame of the stairwell, looking into the basement. Uh, and there are four small figures and three taller cloaked figures, all standing in this basement over the loot, uh, heads upturned to the ceiling and listening intently. Are there any questions before we begin? Uh, this could be relevant. How long? How long? You go first. How long has Lauren been in there? Uh, she literally turned into a spider, crawled through the lock, and just like straight across the room to the stairs and crawled down. So it's been like a minute. Okay. Maybe. I wasn't sure how fast she was moving. So. Um, I think spiders have like a twenty foot speed, so she. she... I'm also a tiny spider, like a She's itty bitty little spider. Itty bitty. Yeah. Um. So yeah, she she's been in there for a minute or less. It has not been long at all. Uh, also, I I did listen to the the last scene there. I believe Burberry currently has detect magic up and running still. You have not dropped concentration on that, so that is still going. Uh, and I don't think anyone else has any spells or anything active right now. Aside from the, the spider form. Um, so Pete, you had, yeah. a, you had a thing. Uh, so, I don't know how we've ruled this in the past. I feel like we've kind of gone back and forth. But can Message okay. talk to Aloran when she's in an animal form or no? Because we originally um, thought it was a mental thing and then it turned out it wasn't. And so we've kind of gone backwards on that, I think. So... You point your finger toward a creature within range and whisper message. The target and only the target hears the message and can reply and whisper only you can hear. Uh, you can cast a spell through solid objects you're familiar with, or through solid objects if you're familiar with the target and know it is beyond the barrier. Uh, magical silence, a foot of stone, an inch of common metal, a thin sheet of lead, or three feet of wood blocks the spell. The spell doesn't have to follow a straight line. It can tra travel freely around corners or through openings. It doesn't say anything in there about... Um, shared language uh i would say it's it does seem like it's an auditory thing though it doesn't seem like it's telepathy because you do have to use a vocal component to, to speak to cast a spell um so like could could we theoretically say like if Lauren was a bear yeah. could we say like grunt like grunt once for yes would we hear a grunt That's... uh we did that last time for whenever she was a dog 
I think I think that's a fair one. I I would say she just can't like verbally communicate anything. It's all just animal <laughs> form because you you don't you can't speak as an animal. Okay. Um. Because it does it does say uh, that you are whispering back and forth, whisper a message, and then you hear. So the long as it's a noise coming out of her mouth, it can be I transmitted think that's as a message. I think Question. that's a fair assessment. If a Lauren turned into a parrot. Would a Lauren be able to speak fluent common? <laughs> It'd be like uh... Kenku rules at that point. You can only say things you've heard. Yeah. So I know I parrots don't have a stat block, but ravens do. Ravens can also mimic voices and stuff. And they have a trait called mimicry, uh, where the raven can mimic simple sounds like it has heard, such as a person whispering or a baby crying or an animal chittering. Uh... I'd be inclined to say you could also mimic short phrases. Um, okay, I can't turn into a bird yet, but I was curious. Yeah, it's going to be a while before you can do that. For some reason, birds are just really hard on druids. And it it's takes the hollow bones, it's complicated. It take, yeah, you got to make sure you don't like break yourself in that transformation, because that's you don't want to... That hurts. <laughs> really got to train for, for bird form. Wait, okay, so could she theoretically turn into flightless birds, like a kitty? I, could I turn into a penguin? Ooh. I, okay, so, could so she turn into an emu? Yeah. So, so this is how Cat's brain works. So she goes, uh, okay, I want to turn into a bird, and I'm like, okay, you turned into a bird. You can't fly, because that's a very, like, you're, that's controlling all of the separate fingers of your, like, wingspan. Mm -hmm. Which is wildly more complicated than four legs. Okay. What if I just turned into a bird, but all I could do is hop around? Is it like a bird with solid bones instead of hollow ones? Yeah. So you're just a really <laughs> heavy I can't bird. Fly. <laughs> a really shitty heavy bird. Yeah. Uh, I failed as a bird, pretty much. Can I turn into a shitty bird? <laughs> you are a very smelly little bird. Can you turn into the mockery of a bird? <laughs> turn into a velociraptor. <laughs> I, I was thinking bird. Why did it be a velociraptor? I hate it. Wah. Um, let's see here. Druids have wild shape. Uh, druid level determines the beast you can transform into. It's shown on the beast table, blah, blah, blah. You can transform into any beast that has a challenge rating of a quarter or lower that doesn't have a fly or swim speed. At fourth level, the only restriction is no fly speed. And at eighth level, there is no restriction uh, outside the CR. And then Moon Druid obviously has a higher CR. But uh, I would be inclined to say as long as the creature itself does not have a, a fly speed, you're probably good to turn into it. So I would I would say yes. An ostrich or an emu is probably acceptable. So when I get afraid, I can just throw my head in the ground? If you really Dope. want to. Hey, you gotta remember the emus defeated an entire Australian army twice. They also conquered an entire plane in Davis' campaign. That's true, they did. Can we just take a moment to realize that that means she could probably turn into a secretary bird, and that is a terrifying thought? Those secretary guys, birds are weird. They don't fuck around. No, they do yeah. <laughs> they fucking crazy. Um, but yeah, there is an axe beak stat block, which is like a big ass violent bird. But I think they're they're like a fantasy bird. They're not like a, a real bird. But we we could approximate, right? Um. So yeah, if you want to be a flightless bird, we can we can probably make that happen. Question is, has Aloran seen a flightless bird recently? Or ever? That's a real Ooh. question. A question for another day. No, Presently, you are a tiny spider perched on a door frame, <laughs> staring into a chamber full of strange little men who are listening intently for sounds up above. What is the party doing? Aloran is skittering back. <laughs> I think we're just waiting because she's she's barely been gone. So it's like, okay. okay. Yep. So less than a minute later, uh, Aloran squeezed her way out of, into the end of the chamber through the keyhole and then whoosh, comes right back out. Um, you see the little legs poke out, just whoosh, 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 pull her out of the, the keyhole and she drops down to the ground. And. Don't uh, step on me. Turns back into a Lauren. What are you doing? Did you uh, I'm gonna go. Are you right there? No. 
<laughs> that was a good idea, Did though. Did you want to turn into a lord on the other side of the door so you could open it for it? That was also a really good idea. Actually, so before I turn into a... Because I never said that I turned back into a Lauren. Well, would it still be That's locked fair. from the other side? That's fair, yeah. No, so you want to... You, you suddenly come to this realization like, oh shit, actually, and you'll crawl back through the keyhole. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everyone's like, where are you going? And then I'll transform and I'll <clears throat> try to open the door. Um, okay, sure. Uh, there is a, a pretty heavy um, latch on the inside of the store. But you could definitely um, unlock it. I'm doing it as quietly as possible. Roll a stealth check. <laughs> or sleight of hand, whichever is better. I guess this is a manual dexterity kind of thing. Both the same, so that's a 15. 15? Okay. There is a very high-pitched creak at first when you when you just inch the door open so you slow down and just very 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 slowly carefully just edging the door open to a point where it stops creaking before you swing it all the way open for the rest of the party we're all just standing there watching her open a door for like a solid <laughs> minute yeah um as you're as you're doing this you're listening it doesn't seem to be any movement from downstairs as far as you can hear so for the time being it sounds like you got away with it now I'll whisper to the party members in a Lauren's quiet voice and <laughs> <laughs> do they uh, hear you <laughs> I don't know they rolled a four they didn't hear you <laughs> so, Okay. we can step uh, away from the door a little bit too probably yeah that's fine uh, so I'll be like, I found all the loot, all the treasure, and it's protected by three large thingies and robes and four little thingies and robes. And they're not think... wearing robes. They're naked. Oh, they're naked. Okay. Mm -hmm. Four little I naked they had thingies. Hoods. Didn't you say they had hoods? Last the little time? guys do not. They're little oh. potato men. Uh, the three taller ones have hoods and, and uh, little shoulder capes. <laughs> They're, they're pretty well they're covered. They're potato men. Does that mean if we fry them, they turn into fries? If you want to boil, mash them, or cook them in a stew. That's what okay, you do with Sam potatoes. <laughs> As a barnacle does with potato, too. Oh, <clears throat> well, if uh, these things can fly or teleport like we guessed last time, I don't know if rushing down there is going to do a whole hell of a lot. They'd just get out as fast, faster than we could catch them. Well, if we know where there are, can't we cast an anti-magic or the silence thingy before we go in? I can do... I was about to say, level 4 party cast anti-magic field. Sorry. <laughs> As I, I wasn't... I was thinking anti-magic, but I was... Because it stops most magic, but it's not anti-magic. Yeah, anti -magic. dude, bards are really good. I, I got anti-magic field at level 3. Oh, also, at level 4. <laughs> while we're discussing, I'm going to cast, um... Oh, you know, the, the path without a trace. Yeah, yeah okay, whatever. <laughs> miss, <laughs> miss sneaks a lot, fine. Um, so everyone gets their nice plus 10 bonus of stealth as, as a lore and just kind of quietly. To be fair, we don't actually need to catch them. We weren't hired by the entire town. We were hired to get exactly one thing. That's true. A valid point, Burberry. I, I, if we get I feel like I used that same thing. logic with the goblins, and that did not go super well. <laughs> no, 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 but, but, but you know, they're, they're stealing things at random, so unless they steal her thing at random again, it's much less likely, right? Unless now they know that it's I easy mean, to steal. We can get everything, and then everyone in the town will love us, and then the elders will probably most definitely speak to us. I think we'll, we'll get more brownie points if we take them down. I can say your optimism is amazing, Lauren. Thank you. <laughs> I, Lauren, did these things seem like evil, or were they just like the goblins, just kind of doing what they do? Yeah, did they seem mm. evil or like goblins? <laughs> Give me an insight check. <laughs> Didn't you mention Retroactively. Footprints that weren't tiny, not goblins size. Uh, they were like normal humanoid booted footprints. Light, though, 
it should be noted. They were they were not very like heavy imprints in the dust. Got an eighteen. Eighteen. Okay. From the brief moment you glimpsed these creatures, um, she. I mean, she knew they were scared. They were definitely on alert. Um, the little ones definitely gave off a less aggressive vibe than the goblins when you met them. The little ones just seemed like wretched little guys. Um, harder to say about the dark, the tall cloaked ones. Um, didn't have a good look at their faces just because of the hoods. Uh, and they did not really emote much. Um, so I, I leave that to your your own read about what uh, what to make of them specifically. But the little guys are definitely like kind of kind of pathetic feeling. Little and ones sm- and smelly. You you definitely picked up a, a pretty pungent, distinct smell coming off of them. I will relay that information, and then I'll say the tall ones seemed creepy. Hmm. And I don't know why the little ones were naked. That made me uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should just go in and just fuck some shit up. Because those are <laughs> off obviously, not the gate watch. And I feel like I'm we also... Going in and mess things up. I'm yeah, a, I feel like... I'm a little more reluctant on uh, uh, f- fucking up slash murdering thieves. Cannibalistic spiders are one thing, but I guess they weren't technically cannibals. They were just carnivores, but still. Predatory spider men. Very there bad. we go. Thank you, voice from the sky. You're welcome, Barbary. Good job. I am Keep also it kind of on Burberry's uh, side. One of your gods was that one. <laughs> I'm kind of on Burberry's um, side with this one, but also we are kind of being hypocrites because we did kill the goblins and all they did was steal. Flip <laughs> point, and, Noel. So and, let's and kill him. The head goblin did try to murder us. Honestly, Later. I think if we run down there, they're just going to fly or teleport out. They can clearly do some kind of magical transportation. Didn't we learn our lessons from the goblin? Like, we said we weren't going to kill them just for stealing, but then they, like, raided our entire like place we were at. Like, did did we not learn our lesson here? They tried very never, badly to raid. I will never learn my lesson on giving good people a second chance. Thank you. Aww. Burberry with the moral fire. I mean, do we consider them as people? <laughs> I would not. Well, I, I, I hate weird. to say this. You have never think you've seen Burberry outright glare at somebody, but he almost outright <laughs> glares at you. This is well, like the I stillest, mean, the most just... like unblinking. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, okay, guys. Like, how about this? How about this? So we're worried about teleportation. I got a nifty spell that if they're in a 20 foot radius of each other and they're all kind of bunched up. I have a spell called Entangle, where roots come up, grab them, and then they'll be restricted by the, the, the vines. What is that? Would stop them from flying? Does, it, does that stop them from teleporting? Potentially, I don't know. I mean, didn't didn't we didn't we already figure out how to deal with teleporting <laughs> with um, Willem? We just, we just silence them as fast as possible. Okay, so Noel, you silence. I entangle. And then we tackle them all to the ground and tie them up. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I guess DM. Would I know mm-hmm. if if are do beasts with magical abilities that can like shape shift or or teleport theoretically like do they have to use components in the same way we do? Because I because Noel probably understands magic to a point where she knows that you have to say magical words sometimes. But I don't know if creatures have that restriction uh i would say roll either an arcana or nature or maybe a hit, like just some 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 intelligence skill okay. i guess they're all terrible your, so i'll your just go for it let's see what happens sure. uh blip nine nine Ugh. fucking i'm sure i can try it <laughs> i mean do we know if there are any creatures that have the innate ability to teleport isn't it always a magic that are there creatures that have the innate ability I, to I teleport? Think the only... Give me a give me a nature check, John. Maybe you know something. I don't know. Have I ever heard of any? We can find <laughs> out. Uh, now with the nature check. 
I'm trying to find my nature. Oh, God. There's plus zero. <laughs> plus zero. Yeah, good job. Uh, ten. <laughs> ten. One better than <laughs> Noel. It's a big world out there, John. Anything could happen. Who knows? I, I, You've heard all kinds of stories, but, like, none of them have been verifiable. You're not sure what's real and what's not. Some of it's adventurers just talking shit. Some of it, maybe not. There's really no way to know. I, I think the only reason uh, I'm, I'm more hesitant this time is because... I, I mean, I... As much as I... I'm frustrated by those goblins. They probably didn't deserve to die for what they were doing. They just were surviving. And I don't know if that's what these things are doing, but I get the sense that this is more about just what they are, feel compelled to do rather than some kind of motive. They're not doing anything with the things they stole. They're just well, got, piling them up like a dragon. I got two questions. One... Where do we think the gate watch is? Like, if they haven't been in here, are they gone or are they dead? So my inkling on this is that the gate watch, they're going after, like, other worldly beings, mm -hmm. right? They are obviously not here anymore. Yeah, they... So they were... Good. So assume, I'll probably assume death. So I'm assuming that probably whatever caused their death might now be where they currently are and that's those things so and they look they didn't look very i don't know they were just weird looking <laughs> they were okay thank you very much it's kind of weird and gross and sad and i don't like it let's kill them <laughs> no i'm over here saying let me use entangle let me entangle them in all the vines you know and then we can just knock them all out Tie him up and like figure it out from there. And then we're not killing anybody. But the fact that the gate watch is missing and these creatures are now residing in their residence. I will say you took so the I, I I was with you until you said that they'd all died. I'm not sure about that. My guess would be they are perhaps just on there's another town on this island, isn't there? There is another town, yes. Uh, that town's name is, starts with a B, and it is... Uh, Barn Burby. Burpa Burpa. Burpa Burpa. Um, that town's name is uh, Boranorn. Boranorn. I was close. I, I, I'm just yeah. going to throw it out there that it seems like the Gatewatch probably go on missions that take a long time. I could see them having left this facility a year ago and they're just busy in another town or on another island, maybe. <laughs> or maybe they're dead. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Either way, Gatewatch isn't here. Something else is residing in their place. And it's stealing the pe everyone's stuff. So I feel yeah. like we should just Motor go down there. We we know they are down there right now. And if they can teleport a fly away, this is going to be our best chance to get them. If we walk away, then they might not all be here the next time we are. I don't to know. clarify, my, my, you, you guys have scooched back from the, the building to talk about yes. this, right? I assume yeah, we're still okay. keeping my the other... high line, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My other thing is that... Instead of stealing things and going back into the forest to, like, hide their stuff or use the stuff they stole, they seem to be hiding out in the town. Which I feel like is more dangerous. I mean, if they were going to hurt someone, they could have put the it forest. away before now. Well, I'm not saying murder. I'm just saying, let's go down there, let's try to capture them. Or at least capture a few of them for questioning. And get the stuff. I and suppose, get what we can. Worst case scenario, even if our magic fails to stop them, we're still able to just take the stuff and go, and you know, quest complete. Technically, are are we are we aiming for non-lethal then? Yeah, I think we should try. And what okay. if they do try to kill us? Well, then they struck first. Oh, well, then lethal's back on the table. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Okay. 
So I guess we'll probably, at least me and Lauren are for sure going to sneak up to the, near the building probably, so we can cast our magic and run down there. Okay. And then whatever the rest so of the So Lauren is still concentrating on past that trace. Can you do the probably entangle? probably at the tail end of his, his detect magic if he wants to keep holding it. Probably is entangle... Is, is entangle a 20-foot radius? And... No, no, no. Is it, um, is it concentration? Probably. But that's okay. As long as we bet. sneak up before she entangles. It's conjuration. <clears throat> oh, con uh, yeah, concentration. Okay. So we. I just wanted to know if we're losing our sneak as soon as you cast it, so... So let's I feel like everybody first. should just follow us. Yeah, and just, then... so the whole party's going to sneak down the stairs? Yep. Yeah. Actually, they still won't be able to hear us even when we're done sneaking because there will be a giant silence bubble. That's true. Silence well. is a huge radius. Okay, so Noel casts silence first, and then I do entangle. Yes. And then we go bonk their Does heads. Does entangle have a vocal component? Hmm. VNS, I don't know what that means. Yeah, uh, verbal and there somatic. Should be, there should be a component list when you're looking at a, at a spell or a component entry, and it'll say either vocal material or somatic. And or somatic, I should say. So V, V, S, M. So if there's a V there, that means you have to speak out loud to actually cast the spell. Okay. <clears throat> so, Make sure if there's a verbal, that first. means... If there's if a there, verbal... Well, technically, could they do it simultaneously? Yeah, I guess that's true. Because silence, silence has a verbal component too, so presumably the magic doesn't take effect until after you're done saying the words. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So. Wait, I guess that I suppose that means you can't actually cast silence back to back. I can Not I can dispel it. it whenever I want, but if I'm in it, then no. What's the radius of silence? Would we be in it when he casted it? When Noah casted it? Uh. It depends how big this building is. It's a 20 foot radius that I can, on a, cho a place I can choose. I guess it's the exact same as Entangled now that I look at it. Yeah, it is. It's the exact same. Um, I would say that is probably going to pretty much fill up that basement room. Okay. Like, So if we cast it from outside the room, then we're not going to be caught in it. Um, it would be on the edge of it. You'd, you'd be really close to it because the <clears throat> the basement's not bigger than the the first floor um if anything it's probably a little bit smaller just because the stairwell is actually like behind a wall in the basement mm -hmm. and you're coming through a little doorway to step into the room um but uh you can off center it if you want so that it's not like reaching this doorway where you guys are all standing okay i'd like to do that okay yeah. Last yeah. question: Would it take more than two round, or more than a round, to get everybody down those stairs? Is it more than a thirty foot run? From the front door to the stairs, uh, that's probably like thirty feet, and then down the stairs is probably like another fifteen feet. So everyone else just come to the top of the stairs and wait for us to finish our stuff. I mean, I guess we could just yeah. wait at the top I mean, of the stairs. Yeah. We have passed that trace until we would do this. Yeah, yeah honestly, it really just kind of depends on how good our okay. roll for passing. I think we're going to sneak inside, everybody, get everybody toward the top of the stairs and wait there. And then we're going to try our double cast and run down there and see what happens. Okay. <clears throat> so, if I could get a stealth check from everyone in the room. So I'm gonna thirty one. A T three. Woof. Uh t flat twenty for Noel. Flat twenty. Uh twenty two for Burberry. Twenty two. I got the lowest I could get. Fifteen. Fifteen. Good thing. Now the round the party. One plus four plus ten. Good thing the rest John... of the party rolled pretty solid. John's literally in Leather sh or leather pants and shoes, and that's it. So <laughs> that's why he's so sneaky. Yeah, uh, they've been broken in too, so they don't squeak anymore. That helps a lot. Um, so sneaking in, quietly crossing the floor with barely a sound, 
The party assembles around the stairwell. Aloran and Noel begin their descent, creeping down stair by stair. Can Chan join them? <laughs> you want to follow? Just a little bit behind them for, for safety purposes. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Do you just tell me how, how far down the stairs do you want to go? Um, When they stop, I'll stop like five feet behind them. Okay. Um, so John will be on the stairs still, and Noel and Aloran are more or less sitting on... Uh, they're on, on ground floor <clears throat> at the doorway uh, looking in at uh, or able, able to kind of peek around to look into this this um, this larger chamber down down below. Alright, I'll lock eyes so with far, no movement. and do a countdown. And we'll whisper the, and, uh, the and spells and see what happens. Okay. Yeah. And in unison, the two of you peek around the corner and throw your spells into the room. As you do, you see one of the tall figures. Uh, their eyes kind of fall as you move in the doorway. Uh, a hand begins to rise and point, but no sound comes out of their mouth as the silent spell takes hold and numerous vines erupt in silence from beneath their feet attempting to restrain all of them so what does that spell require uh entangle i think that are these deck saves, saves or strength i think saves? it's a deck save. strength save oh, actually strength. oh that's, that's, really <laughs> that's probably better for these crony guys so a creature in the area when you oh. cast a spell must succeed on a strength save or be restrained all right. i guess it's because the, there's just vines everywhere there's no dodging them you just have to strength out of them Yep, pretty much. Oof. That's a good spell pick for this. What is your spell save, uh, DC, Alor? Oh, that's a good oh, question. That's five, I think. That's your spell attack bonus. Uh, it says 13. So roll for the little oh, boys. Okay. So it looks like one of them succeeded. He leaps into the air and is almost like bouncing on top of the vines as they kind of just burst out of the ground. Um, his feet like just barely touching them as he's kind of pushing off them. The other three are too slow. They are immediately wrapped up in this uh, and begin just pathetically wriggling in silence. Um, of the three big boys, uh, one of them will also succeed, uh, while the other two are wrapped up in vines. Uh, the one pointing uh, who caught sight of you, um, his eyes immediately like are drawn down to the ground as the, the vines begin to burst upward, and he kind of leaps backwards on top of a uh, an overturned barrel um, out of the way of the vines, uh, very deftly avoiding them. So uh, with that, let's get some initiative. Got a nat 20. That's the highest I've rolled on initiative in weeks. <laughs> Ooh, so it's 18. A John, got a Lauren. John got a 15. It is not Barnaby's 9. That is a 7. Oof. 7. Barnaby, 19. What's your total, uh, Chani, for Lauren? 22. 22. Alrighty. Uh, good money says Lauren goes first. So, Lauren, what are you doing? There are currently, uh, and you know what? I I will do you guys a favor here. I did open tabletop. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Don't all uh, hold your applause. Um, how do I fucking stream? <laughs> Can you scream? On Discord, you got uh, tabletop in the lower left above video connect or above there uh, it is. voice All connected. Right. So, yeah, connect to the stream and you guys can see what is happening here. So, we've got a uh, roughly 40 foot room, right? So, one, two, three, four, uh, eight. No, 
and we'll double that. Uh, that is circular. Um, so that is... Not, not that big. It's about this big, right? Um, and then you've got a stairwell that is... That, 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 that. So John is standing on that. Aloran and Noel are kind of sharing it. It's very, very cramped full space. Burberry and uh, Barnaby are up top. And then you've also got uh, all the little goobers standing inside. So it's going to be... Did you want me to send you my actual uh, character model? You can use it in 3D... Uh... Yes. Um, I think once we've finished our move, um, we'll probably be in a better position for me to start like playing with tabletop materials again. I feel like we um, probably do that it, between it, sessions, honestly. Yeah, there, there's no real rush right now. I, did, uh, I didn't mean necessarily right now. I just meant for future use. Yeah. Okay. So, um, currently. All but two figures in this room are restrained. So bop, 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 and bop are all restrained. <laughs> so, um, Lauren, what do you want to do? Uh... Oh. Are the other ones still like awake? Uh, everyone's awake. Everyone is conscious. Uh, no one is super happy about what's happening to them. <laughs> um, there are two that are free. There's one little guy who's free and one of the taller figures. Uh, the one who caught sight of you guys as you were uh, casting the spells, but was too slow to act. I'm going to go walk up to the first little guy and bonk him on the head and try to knock him out. Okay. So, Aloran will go over to this fella. <laughs> turn to to, I'm going to turn to a bear and rip his head off. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, I'm just a gentle so thwack. Uh, all right, cool. How are you thwacking? What's your whack? What's your play? Um, I think I have a scimitar. <laughs> and I'm Spice. just gonna. I slit his throat. <laughs> bonk. <laughs> just... We call yeah. that bonk back home. No. <laughs> By bonk, I mean slice open. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm gonna take out my scimitar and with like the butt of the of the handle, I'm just gonna okay. honk it on his okay. head. You're, so, you're just like, go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going to try to do one nice big... Guys, let's try the non-violent option. I'm going to take out my scimitar and, and hit the baby until it goes unconscious. <laughs> I don't right. have something that makes people fall asleep. That's fine. Go ahead, go ahead and roll the hit. It's you, just strange. So when you deal, when you deal melee damage, you, you can specify that you're doing non-lethal damage. That is, yeah, that is well, a rule, so you are allowed to do that. Don't worry. They're not dead, they're just sleeping. <laughs> Forever. <laughs> this is blood fucking What am I out. supposed to do? My entangle lasts for a minute. We need to knock them all out before. Yeah, make your play. Make your play. Let's do it. It's okay. It's okay. You're good. Because it's a sword, so it has a pommel. You can just bonk them with the pommel. Yeah. Alright. I rolled a. Um, a 16. 16 to hit. That'll hit. Go ahead and give me some damage. In the tar. That's little damage. Your Schmita. The Schmitma. It is eight damage. Eight damage. Um, so you walk up to him as he's just like trying to extricate himself. He looks up, silent fear in his eyes, this wide mouth, no sound coming out, this silent scream. And you just BAM! <laughs> whack him in the face. <laughs> I'm <laughs> and Noel, you're just watching as as uh, a lord hits him boom once. There's a solid crack, and in just silent agony, the mouth goes even wider. The hand clasps the face. He's like, oh, it was supposed to be. I just <laughs> to knock him out. He like falls to his knees, clutching his head, just screaming with no noise coming out. <laughs> <laughs> So I made the fatal error. Bonking doesn't work. So. They are fairly sturdy for what it's worth. Uh, <laughs> but you have bonked one. 
and he is on his knees, crying. <laughs> um, that'll take us to Burberry. Burberry, what do you want to do? It's dead silent downstairs. You just watch Deloren walk inside the room, and Noel looks slightly horrified. What do you want to do? <laughs> oh God! <laughs> Your setup was perfect. You guys, you guys, fucking, you got them. <laughs> They're yours to do with what you will. I feel bad for barking now. <laughs> Okay, so I was going to wait, like, you know, do the, oh yeah, I'm going to wait till I, uh, you know, in, until I know that they got started. I was like, oh wait, I still have the detect magic up, so I could probably know when they cast it successfully. That's um, true. So I think I'm going to walk down. Okay. And I'm just going to take in this whole sight. Just be like, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, you um, walk down next to Noel and look inside, and you just see one of the tiny, greasy little potato men. Uh, on the ground, wrapped up in vines, clutching his head, crying in silence. Is it a baby? No. <laughs> no, they're like, it's, he's, he, honestly, now that you're standing over him, he's got like an old man face. He's like super wrinkly. He's got a big bulbous nose. He's like long pointy ears with like gray hairs kind of tufting off of it. Um, these big yellow eyes with like heavy bags and wrinkles and crows. Like he's, he's kind of like old and shitty looking. Um, but he's, he's just like three feet tall, you know, short stubby legs, tiny feet, these long lopy arms and big hands. Um, he's just grubby and he stinks. He stinks real bad. Like that, that um, pungent kind of mossy, fatty, greasy smell uh, is very strong in this room. Guys, come it out. <laughs> so uh, Burberry, seeing this, what do you want to do? Oh, don't uh, bonk. Uh, <laughs> bad. Keep bonking. <laughs> uh, I, I, I would like cast all the motion. Just remember, anything with a verbal component, you can't cast. It's Unless you uh, in, look at Noelle and tell her to drop silence, or like signal to her to drop silence. Well, so silence is covering the room. As long as you're still in the stairwell, you can still use spells, uh, right? Okay. Because you, you, you can center it in a way that'll catch her, everyone without uh, blocking you guys off. Yep, that's okay, exactly uh, what I did. Yeah. Okay. I would I would assume, you know, to, to give yourself a toolkit. So um, from the stairwell, you you can still cast magic. All right, yeah, I'll, I'll cast Calm Emotion, which has a 20-foot range. I'll do it all on, on, on all of the, the things. Uh, and that, Including uh, a Lauren. I want to... I want oh, to, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I want to suppress their their uh, each humanoid incident. in a twenty foot radius sphere centered on a point you choose within range must make wow. a charisma save. Oh, okay. We have a lot of those. That's, all... That's impressive. Um, so Lauren has to do a charisma save. Yeah, I need I need one from Lauren too. <laughs> I mean, it's just to, to suppress being frightened. Are you frightened right now? Yeah. I'm upset. I so, feel bad. If a creature fails or fails to save, you choose one of the two effects. You can suppress any effect, causing them to be charmed or frightened. And alternatively, you can make the target indifferent about a creature of your choice that it is hostile towards. This indifference ends if the target is attacked or harmed by a spell, or if the witness or if it witnesses any of its friends being harmed. Uh, so, if you could say that none of them will be hostile towards Lauren again, unless she hits somebody again. Okay. Uh... <laughs> it's okay. I have a different plan now. So. <laughs> So, uh, I didn't know I had to beat the stage him little to boys. Uh, they, oh, they have even worse charisma than they have strength. <laughs> What's your spell save, Burberry? 13? Yeah. Uh, again, all but one fails. Um, I failed. Okay, so Aloran is now, uh, you feel very strangely relaxed after hitting this little man. Uh, as does he. He kind of, he's like still rubbing his head, but he kind of looks up to you. Um, kind of rubs his eyes. The, the tears are kind of starting to fade away, and you just kind of uh, see him mouthing something. Um, just kind of pitifully, just like. Uh, Can I mouth, I'm sorry back? I'm like, I'm sorry. Let's go to sleep. He's just like. What? what? I mean, now we're both just. Yeah, you're both just like miming at each other in the silence bubble. Um, <laughs> A lot of the other figures in the room are kind of like shaking their heads and kind of like looking at the vines confusedly, looking at each other and like at the doorway at you guys. 
Um, if no one's looking at the room is... while this happens, could I clock maybe if she can spot which ones whose behavior suddenly changed or they just immediately calm down? Uh, yeah, give me a... Uh, actually, I think you've got pretty good passive insight. I could, I could probably just give this to you. Um, 14, I think. 15, yep. Um, yeah, it, it's not super hard. Uh, the ones that are clearly struck by the spell have definitely like stopped struggling against the vines. Um, and of the are... big ones, let's say, do do those. I will say uh, the one that succeeded. I actually have to roll them still. Uh, ooh, actually, all but one of the big ones succeeded. Um, so <laughs> the one that it was pointing at you guys suddenly like stops and looks around confusedly the two other ones that are standing next to him that are restrained are still fighting their restraints okay. um Good to know. so yeah uh most people in this room are currently calmed there are it's well it's not most it's like half half and half okay three of the little dudes and then the one kind of lead figure in the back um so that'll be We'll use a different color to mark them. Uh, they are blue now, so uh, calm, calm. Uh, one of the free ones is calmed, and then the one in the back is calmed. Did you just want to change their token color? Oh, that's fine. For I now. could. It, this works. Um, so uh, that will take us to Noel. Okay. I'm gonna try and As do this. As the epic music in your mind yes. plays. <laughs> this is a very not not quite as epic turn as this music is going to uh, indicate, but um, now I was going to walk in. I'm going to try and do this non-verbally. Okay. Um, I'm going to take. I would assume I would have some kind of like just a stick in my disguise kit, and just a white okay. rag. I'm going to okay. tie it as like you would a flag, a ceasefire. Okay. And I'm going to toss it over to maybe the middle area between the three big ones. Okay. And I'm going to walk over to a Lauren and take the scimitar and re-sheathe it. <laughs> <laughs> if she will let me. A Lauren, you're feeling like, very but... relaxed, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, okay. And then I will sort of just gesture to the flag. Um, all the little dudes kind of like look back at it and they look to the lead figure who kind of like looks from it to you kind of confusedly um the two that are still kind of struggling are suddenly like suddenly gesticulating um like putting a hand up to him and like gesturing at you and starting to like yell something and he just kind of looks at them confused like what are you saying because and he starts like they're they're both trying to converse now uh and not getting anything across because it's dead silent in this room uh but there's now a conversation happening um so, John, it is dead silent downstairs. You have no idea what's happening. What do you want to do? Uh, how much movement does it take to get to the door? It's like 10 feet. It's not far. I'm going to get to the door then. Okay. So, yeah, you look inside. Uh, you will see Noel standing next to a Lauren and one of the little restrained men. Uh, you will see several of the figures are restrained. Um the three in the back, the big boys, are having an argument of some kind, and there is uh, now, amidst the pile of coins and and uh, valuables, there is a a small white flag of, of surrender <laughs> just kind of thrown on top of it uh, that they seem to be arguing over. They're, they keep gesturing to it and pointing to you guys in the doorway and, and back to each other, but no so sound is coming out. It is dead silent in this room. So they're giving up. They seem to be very vigorously debating it, or trying to debate it, since it's dead quiet. Um, Am I able to see what they look like under the, the cloaks, or is it still not? You could make a perception check. Um, like I said, there, it's kind of like a half cape. It like goes down to like the waist. It's not a very long one, uh, with a, but there is a hood that is pulled up over the faces. So. Are they about to have like an orgy? Is that why the little ones are naked? <laughs> Okay. Uh, <laughs> I used my I used oh, my yeah. inspiration to see if I could. Okay, sure. So your action and perception, sure. Uh, so the first one, uh, thirteen. Second one's a natural twenty. So, okay. Yeah. So twenty-four um, for perception. Through the gesticulation and the frantic uh, 
mouthing of un unheard words. Uh, you do kind of like squint and, and scrutinize these figures. Um, and you catch flashes of a pretty humanoid looking face underneath. Um, they all have kind of a gaunt uh, sort of high cheekbones, pointed chin, uh, sort of bone structure, these hooked noses, um, kind of sunken dark eyes, uh, and uh, pointed ears underneath. Um, they're, they're humanoid, but there is definitely something strange and unsettling about the structure of their 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 face it's it's definitely not like any person you've ever met before there 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 is an almost otherworldly sort of visage there something alien, as, something strange. i'm assuming by the way that you're talking i don't i don't like recognize that yeah you're not really sure what they are but you 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 can definitely catch flashes of the fact that these are you know gray skins humanoid looking figures that you know Lips, noses, eyes, eyebrows, all that shit. But just Am I able to make it peculiar. to the closest one? Um, you could make it from the doorway. One, two, three. Uh you could get within ten feet of one of them. Okay. Could I get in within ten feet and then use my the butt of my staff to take the hood off? Uh yeah, sure. Uh I'll say go ahead and make just a basic attack. But we won't roll damage. Wow. Natural one. <laughs> okay. So so you kind of tentatively just kind of like start like raising the, the, the end of your staff towards him. Uh, and he, he immediately like stops whatever he was about to say to the others. That again, still totally inaudible. Oh. Uh, turns I mean, you and just staff, right? yeah yeah <laughs> he just like fucking swats the stick away and immediately starts in on you like what the fuck what are you doing what the fuck but like you can't hear anything he's saying it's it's all hand There's a, you see a lot of f sounds yeah. coming out of his mouth yes yeah. um and now now he's arguing with you uh and like the the other restrained one is also kind of pointing at you and like down at the at the flag and at the vines everywhere and like he's getting in on you. Uh, the one figure who's been calmed kind of steps down off of his barrel. And he he, he kind of starts raising his hands like, guys, guys, chill. It's okay. Chill. Um, he's trying to smooth things over. <laughs> but they the argument just seems to continue. And again, no one is making a single sound. So it is very, very hard to get anything across. Very unproductive. Uh, so that'll take us to the first of the enemy creature's turns. Um the two boys who are currently restrained are going to attempt to pull themselves free because being restrained sucks. So, um, they need to make a strength check against Entangle, I believe. Oh, actually, question. Does Entangle create difficult terrain? Yes, it does. Oh. Okay. Technically, John would not have been able to walk that far and take an action this turn because of the vines, but y'all kind of have this on wrap. I'm not super, super worried. Um, one of them will break free, and so will the other. Uh, they will pull themselves free of the vines um, and immediately kind of like walk up to you, John, uh, and they don't get super aggressive because you're easily twice their height. But they definitely kind of square up to you as best they can, and they kind of, like, thump you in the chest and, like, gesture down at the flag and at you and the glaive, and they just, they, they immediately start throwing, like, their hands around, like, what, what the fuck are you doing? What are you doing? What is this? What is this shit? Um, very irritated. Uh, but they don't take any violent action. Um, the lead figure in the middle of all this, who is still calmed, will do his best on his turn to step in and try and like put his hands on their hands, pushing them down, being like, guys, chill, chill. Listen, let's talk this out. Like you get, you're definitely getting that, that relaxed vibe off of him. But again, still no sounds coming out. During his uh, turn, Barnaby. I'll just kind of gesture at him and then like point to the flag. <laughs> uh, 
and, and like he he's like he points to you and he points to the flat and like the room and like his mouth like I, 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 he can't he can't understand anything that's happened like any nobody can hear anything that's being said so like there, there's not really a way to progress a conversation right now um barnaby yes it is your turn what do you want to do I'm hearing nothing, so I will cautiously approach the room and peek in. Okay. Uh, so, getting down to the base of the stairs, standing next to Burberry, looking in, um, it's a weird kind of chaos in the room. There's a very heated conversation that is totally inaudible taking place in the back uh, between John and the three taller figures. Uh, Aloran and Noel are currently standing over one of the little men who has kind of a big red knot forming on his forehead. Uh, Aloran is kind of like, like kneeling down, just kind of patting it like there, there, I'm sorry. Uh, and then the little guy, she's kind of like, Ooh, you know, he's kind of got that wrinkled face. Um, got a little teary eyed. Um, the other little dudes are kind of just standing around covered in vines, looking at each other. Like what, what is happening right now? It's, it's a fucking scene. Um, do you want to do anything with this? I'm just going to kind of stare in awe for a moment and be like, what on earth is going on here? <laughs> Take out the gun. <laughs> just fucking blows the head off of one of them. Reminds me of one time when I was at my mama's and one of the kids said something harsh. Shouldn't mm -hmm. have. It was a bit odd. So I'm going to let it play out. Just watch what happens. Just get the popcorn. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. All right. So Barnaby's holding. I'll, holding his I'll just hold hold my action. I guess if if someone looks like it's about to do something, then I'll ready my battle axe in bonk form. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, that will bring us to the tiny men's turn, who rolled the lowest on the initiative. Uh, they will attempt to free themselves from their confines. Just as a matter of course. Nobody likes being restrained. Uh, that's a failure. That's a... I believe that's a success. Uh, 16 total. Yep. Alright, so that's one success. Uh, and then from the final restrained boy, uh, that'll be a nat 20. Um, so they'll kind of pull themselves out. Uh, two of them will. Um... The one who freed himself towards the back, uh, he looks around at this uh, this scene right now. Uh, this is the one who has not been calmed down at all. Uh, he's still looking totally panicked and wild-eyed. He takes a look at this room that is now full of people, and his eyes dart over to the side of the room where there's like an overturned chair. Uh, and he just starts like waddling, like wading through the vines towards it. Uh, he reaches uh, the chair and reaches through sort of the gap between uh, the seat and uh, one of the supports between the legs and just practically throws himself through it diving and just vanishes from sight. And he is gone. Um, that will take us to the top of the order. Oop. He is still calmed. Wait, between the... So basically, like, be between a gap in the chair? Yeah, so so it's like the seat, right? You know you know how you have the, uh, you have the seat, and then you've got the legs, and then you'll have, like, a little bar? Yeah. Kind of, so, like, that gap right there between the seat and that bar. He just, he just dove for it and just vanished. <laughs> Cool skill. They're weird. <laughs> Teleport via chair. <laughs> well, I, I think it's the, the space between the chairs, so like if it's a closed window. That would probably be more useful than teleport via plants. Uh, so yeah, uh, top of the order, we are back to Aloran. You're feeling very calm, Aloran. The little guy's hey. bump on his head is getting kind of red, but uh, he's He's kind of relaxed a little bit. He's a little teary-eyed. He's looking up at you. I will cast a spell. Okay. And I will cast Pure Wounds. 
Does cure wounds require vocal components? Oh. Yes, it does. Oh. oh. Then you cast nothing, Aloran. <laughs> you try to encant, but it's dead quiet, and you can't even hear yourself talk. Okay. If it ever becomes unquieted, I will cast cure wounds. Can uh, Can Aloran move through the vines easier than us, or is everybody? Everyone. It is difficult terrain for everybody. Okay. Um, the room is predominantly chilled out right now. We're gonna oof. this music. There we go. There you go. Yeah, very uh... <laughs> intense. Very intense for this. Um, so we'll just go to this one, I think. There we go. So, uh, Aloran will ready an opportunity to cast uh, Cure Wounds. Um, I think that uh, Burberry, is there anything you want to do with your turn here? Uh, I was actually also going to cast Cure Wounds. Okay. Well, unfortunately, you cannot with the Silence Bubble up, so well, that is also moot. No, you said I was outside of it. Cause that's yeah, but Cure Wounds is touch. Oh, right. Well, in that case, I'll do Healing Word. That'll work. Okay, sure. Healing, healing Word, the little guy? Yeah. Okay, sure. Give him a little boost. Because um, I, I, I... Cat is aware that you cast the Cure Wounds. I don't think Burberry would be. Or okay. already in the Cure Wounds. <laughs> sure. Um... um so yeah, so cure wounds to the little guy and he'll uh, restore healing word. Yeah. Healing healing word, excuse me. Uh, that's gonna be seven. Or pretty much seven. back, pretty much back to full. The little, the redness totally vanishes. There's just like a, a slight raised bump there, a little swelling. Um, but he suddenly looks a lot more relieved and kind of wipes a tear from his eye, and uh, just kind of meets your gaze for a moment, for kind of absentmindedly looking around the room to see what the fuck is happening. Noel. Uh, could I make it over to the woodworker's kit that's in the pile? Yeah, that's that's not too far from you. It's like right next to John, one of the little dudes, who's just kind of like uh, he's he's pulled himself out, but he's still kind of like vacantly looking around and as you approach, he kind of just like slowly recoils and then he sees you reaching for the wood kit and he just kind of yeah, I'll just, you, Noel just sort of bends over and like pulls the kit out from the silver pile okay. uh, and just picks it up, kind of puts it under an arm. And it's then... pretty hefty. Yeah, it's, it's definitely got some weight to it. And yeah. There's a, a good clatter of tools inside. I have I have average strength. Yeah, um, I mean, you, you can carry it. It's just, I, I will say, it, it's got weight to it. Yeah. <clears throat> um, if you dropped it on your foot, it would hurt for sure. And then <laughs> I'm just sort of going to casually stop concentrating on silence and the first thing that anyone is going to hear is I'm going to sort of look over to those three bigger ones. I'm just going to say, if you just raised the flag, we, we would have been able to talk. Okay. Uh, as the first sounds uh, out of the silence, um, you are current or attempt to be the first sound. You are now competing with three uh, kind of uh, raspy voices that are very feverishly arguing with one another in a language you don't understand. They are just shouting over one each other, another at this point. Um, it just immediately turns on, just ah, da, 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 da. Okay. Uh, and it kind of like freezes for a moment as they realize, oh shit, the sound's back on. Um, and they kind of look around before immediately starting back up. Um, I recognize and, what language. Yeah, what, what language are we hearing? Um, so, does anyone speak Sylvan? Uh, I don't know. Yes. What? Holy shit, yes. someone speaks Sylvan? Nope. Barnaby understands what's being said. It's a very unfamiliar accent to your ears, but you, for some reason, uh, recognize what they're saying as, as a language you, you've, you've, uh, you grew up with. Um, and yeah, uh, 
these guys are feverishly arguing. It's like the flag is a means of surrender. This is how they say I am done fighting. We can stop fighting now. I don't trust them. I don't. You know, they're they're just fucking going off. Uh, and you know, immediately after the, they realize they can, he's like, oh, what? The, the sound's back. It's off. It sure and is there. Uh, and you say this in Sylvan. Yes. Wait, wait. They so all this, they all freeze and just turn to look at you across the room. You know of the accent in Sylvan. <laughs> oh, it's still southern. <laughs> <laughs> it is southern Sylvan. And when did you learn the fair tongue, red one? Uh, one of them will speak up. A couple of years back. Just casually picked it up. Correspondence yep. course. <laughs> <laughs> my nana taught it to me yeah um the one uh central lead figure just kind of uh kind of raises a hand to the other two and kind of steps forward kind of past john and just kind of clasps his hands and he says we appreciate that you do not seem to mean us any harm but you'll forgive my associates perhaps for being a little uh unsettled by your means of approach. Uh, the other two are saying, they literally attacked us. It was an ambush. We had no preparations ready. We were not ready. Please, please, brothers. Uh, and the argument just, just kicks back up again. They are very much at odds with one another at this point. Um, I could interject for a moment. That was... Yeah, sure. What do you want to say? <laughs> we're just trying to figure out why this stuff all got done stolen. That's that's why we're here. Well, it's funny that you say, you tell him nothing, sir. You have been ensorcelled. It is clear to me that your mind is not your own right now. I'm not sure what you're talking about, my friend. I feel perfectly fine. More at peace than I have been in some time, actually. It's quite nice. <laughs> yeah, gets... I have that effect on some members. Yeah. Um, I'll say, go ahead and give me uh, just a general persuasion check as you're trying to kind of calm things down right now. Let's see. Von Abbey, do you what? think you could ask if any of them speak common? One second, I'm rolling a dice. <laughs> <laughs> he just holds up a finger as he kneels down in the pile, picks up a dice, and... <laughs> that is a 14 plus 1, 15. 15. Okay. Yep. Um, also, y'all speak common. We'll make it a bit easier. My cohorts could uh, translucidate for us as well. You must forgive us. We are not versed in the common tongues of your lands. This was, they don't uh... speak common. <laughs> I just shout back in common. Thank, thank God you speak whatever they do. Yeah, you are called Barnaby, correct? Barnaby Ray Otis the Third is my full name. Mister Barnaby Ray Otis the Third. How do you do? Can I get your words that you mean this party of mine? No harm, no further harm, at least. And you hear the two behind him. It's like, sir, this is a terrible idea. You can't be doing this. Like, please, please. They have been kind so far. I can say that for the time being, so long as your cohorts uh, play ball with, with you. We're just trying to figure out why this stuff got done taking. That's why we're here. Like I said. You see the two behind him kind of shake their heads like, don't do it, sir. <laughs> Um, the little dudes around the room are just kind of, kind of clasping their hands, looking and watching and waiting. <laughs> uh, but the uh, the central figure here, uh, he just kind of holds up a hand. He says, "If you permit my cohort to leave this place unharmed, then I think I would be happy to answer whatever questions you may have." For me. 
And they say that you, you, you can hear them not very carefully trying to hide this. They kind of lean in They're like, sir, you know very well we cannot leave until nightfall at latest. It's like, please, brothers, just. Can we get your promise, Mr. Barnaby Ray Otis the third? On an inside. Is he up to something? Uh, sure, give me an inside check. So how long is he going to be calm? That's a good question. I think that it's an hour, isn't it? I don't, I, don't know. I don't have that stuff. I love it so much. It's a minute. Oh, a minute? Yeah. That's pretty good. That's really good. I mean, it's it's really good in combat purposes, but for, like, yeah, out of combat purposes, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> like... He's going to broker this deal feeling pretty chill, and as soon as Barnaby says yes, this guy's just like, fuck, what have I done? <laughs> that is his problem, not mine. Yeah. I, I, I voice in common and point to the one that he mentioned. Mm -hmm. Let that one go. Can, can I go sit on the chair and make sure there's no more chair teleporting? Yeah, sure across the room if, and sit down. If I see him freak out, I'll be like, should I cast it again? <laughs> uh, so inside check, you said Barnaby, right? Yes. What'd you, what'd you get? Uh, let's see. He's not good at inside, but thankfully he got a 16 minus one, so 15 again. 15, okay. Um, presently, this one, the this lead figure is, is still placated by the, the spell that Burberry cast. He, he seems pretty relaxed and not super worried. Uh, his underlings here definitely seem more on edge than, than he does. Uh, does not does not really feel like there's a, an attempt to deceive or anything happening right now. Alright. Um, I think I can trust you for the time being and then, yeah, I'll say what I said in common. Sure. Point to the one that they want. He'll I let him go. He'll nod. He'll extend a hand. So then we have an accord. Do you shake? Sure. Why not? And as you shake, Burberry, the spell begins to fade, and you see the expression on this creature's face fade from a sort of serene calm to a sudden. Sour face. <laughs> he looks down at the clasped hand. The mouth kind of puckers. Kind of looks back to you, Barnaby. I think we made a deal. You gonna honor it? <laughs> it would seem that we did. Very well, Mr. Barnaby. The others are free to go. And he will turn to the others. Uh, the little ones who are now also no longer calmed. Uh, you definitely see kind of the twitchy panic kind of come back to them as they're like, oh, oh shit, wait, we were about to get beaten. Um, and they kind of shrink back a little bit and he kind of turns to all of them and snaps his fingers. They all turn to look and he just kind of gestures with a hand, just away with you. Uh, and um, one of them kind of like teeters over to John and just kind of like looks at him. He's like, <laughs> kind of like tries to push your leg out of the way to try and get under the chair. Uh, are you going to fight this guy as he tries to to pass under the chair, John? You're muted. He's trying to go through my legs? Yeah, he, he's, he's, he walks up to you and he, he's like trying to get around your legs, like, like kind of pacing around. He's like trying to push your leg out of the way to get to the chair. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to comment. Chair teleportation. That's a good one. That's a good point. So you uh, you all uh, teleport through chairs? Uh, I don't feel that that is quite correct, although that is a quite fascinating theory, I must say. Uh, as you say this, Burberry, one of them will actually just kind of scurry past you into the stairwell, uh, kind of shoot you one sideways glance over his shoulder before he just uh, kind of belly flops onto the stairs and starts pulling himself underneath one of them. And you just watch his little feet just kicking as he disappears into the darkness underneath the stairs. Uh, and he's gone. Um, 
another one is going to just kind of teeter over to uh, one of the overturned empty barrels and just step inside. And the last thing you see is his little yellow eyes just kind of fading away. Can we do an arcana check to see if they're doing shadow stepping? Uh, yeah, sure. John, there's still the one who's just like trying to push past you into the chair. <laughs> and I'm an one. 20. Um, yeah, Berber, you like peek under the chair, under the stairs, and it's just like a dusty cobweb mess back there. There's like no trace of this dude. He's totally gone. Um, you're not really sure what kind of magic or trick or ability this is. Um, but he's definitely, definitely vanished from this spot. Uh, seemingly using the stairs as some sort of portal. Well, in any case, it's absolutely fascinating. Uh, to answer the question that was posed earlier, the, the lead figure will say, the little boggles have a way of getting places they were not meant to. We must move by more typical means. Let's see. All right. So you're going to answer my first question, then? I suppose we did have a deal, didn't we? We did. Well, then to answer your other question, we were ordered to take these. Interesting, interesting. By who? Our superior. The gatekeeper in the woods. Gatekeeper. Wouldn't happen to be a big fellow scaring all the goblins away, would he? he she's not a big fella. Mm. But we have had dealings with goblins in the past month, yes. I mean, most people are big to goblins. Uh, that's a good <laughs> point. Forgive me for saying so, but a lot of you seem to be outsiders to the island. It's true. What business is it of yours, what transpires between the gatekeeper and the residents of this township? Do you have well, some right. special interest here? Right now, presently, I'm here on a personal matter, trying to figure it out. And so I came here. I think he meant, why are we here for the uh, stolen stuff? That one. I that understood that. that. And that's because we were hired. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It does I, 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 I assume I, Barnaby I was assumed, I assumed Barnaby yeah, yeah, yeah. was acting. No, I know. I just found yeah. it fun. Yeah, yeah. If not, this is going to be a very one-sided conversation. <laughs> it's a very slow conversation otherwise. <laughs> Okay, well, uh, I simply we had okay. we had someone report that uh, some of their stuff was done stolen. Can't exactly have that happen around town, so started investigating, found little footprints, and well, we uh, tracked it down. Well, congratulations, heroes! You found us. Yeah, so uh, looks around. So what's this uh, big old lady that y'all y'all be dealing with? Tell me a bit more about her. Kind of looks over to his three compatriots. Looks over to the one singular boggle that is still wrestling with John's leg. Is trying to get under the chair. <laughs> um, kind of looks at all of you, weighing his options here for continuing. <clears throat> The gatekeeper is a powerful fae that guards the border between this island and the wilds beyond. Our home. And of late, the islanders have offended her. 
And so we have been tasked with persuading them, shall we say, to honor our prior arrangement. At present, some minor mischief has been called for. But if things continue, perhaps we must resort to more drastic measures. I have a question. That is between the islanders and the gatekeeper. Or oh, no, no, no. Like, have you actually told any of the islanders that they've done something? The signs of our activities here in Gladham are not hard. Well, they are hard to miss, I should say. Uh, not hard. Uh, the signs of our activities here in Gladham are hard to miss. The elders what? of the island understand what is happening uh, here. See, we're trying to get to see the elders as well. Mm. True. Well. I would imagine so, they are somewhat preoccupied with the current issue they are having with the gatekeeper. Whatever business you have with them, I would not expect them to be done or ready to see you until they are finished here. I mean, maybe we can help fix whatever's going on? Kind of cocks an eyebrow. Intrigued. Enchanted help with a higher being would be highly agreeable. I mean... Oftentimes, an outsider can see things more clearly than those directly involved. Also, a good point. You would be willing to deliver a message for the gatekeeper, then? Oh, it'd be our honor. I could do that. You see the two in the back, who up to this point have still been very, like, kind of on edge and withdrawn, uh, listening to this conversation play out. Uh, you see these kind of wry grins kind of spread across their faces as they hear Barnaby translating all this. They kind of glance at each other. Perhaps this has worked out better than we could have hoped, sir, they will say from behind him, and he'll contemplate this for a moment. Hope it does. Hope it works out that way. I do not imagine that the elders of the islands, nor the gatekeeper, truly wish to involve you in their personal affairs, but if you could perhaps add a little extra weight, I'm sure the gatekeeper would be appreciative. If it seems like whatever's going on with the uh, with your side and their side is inhab inhibiting the reason we came to the this island in the first place, I mean, it's in our best interest to help solve it. Well then, given that that is the case, perhaps you can be direct with them. Let them know if they have not met the gatekeeper's demands within the week. She will, in all likelihood, order that we escalate our activities here in Gladden. And to the gate watch that lived in this building? Could be another good question. You're I think we can do that. By the way, I got another question one of our members. Mm. Out. Is there ever a gate watch around here? Or what did happen to him? Gate watch. The ones that own this building. Yeah, man, what they said. He kind of glances around. Uh, one of the little ones in the back kind of leans in and like whispers something into his ear. He kind of nods. I do not believe I know what became of the prior residence of this building. Can I roll when we found it, it was empty and well fortified. It suited our purpose well. So we took it. As we can. take many things, <laughs> as you can see. 
How long ago? I roll I can. On that guy. Inside check? Yes. Yeah, sure. Um, how long ago you said, Pete? Yeah, I would, I would tack that on, too. Ooh, 24. 24? Yeah. There was some real cagey energy coming off of that answer. Oh, they're lying. I fucking knew it. <laughs> uh, he um, he kind of thinks back a bit. It has been some weeks. Three or four, I think. Since we have come to Gladden to do our work at our master's bidding. Was there any additional value gained from, or that you were looking to gain from these items you'd stolen, or was this just to pester the community? The gatekeeper's orders were to take things that would be missed. Interesting. We have very little use for trinkets of your land. They are Points to our eyes. However, he will kind of like eye the case under your arm. I do not believe that removing an item from the uh, trove here, you might say, would be in line with the gatekeeper's goals. I'm sure that if everything is worked out, that the items will be returned. If things also go as the gatekeeper wishes, we simply leave. And will not return until the islanders renege on their responsibilities once more. Meaning what becomes of these items here? are of no important to us. Do you know what deal that was, or is that a gatekeeper exclusive that is between the elders and the gatekeeper so just I assume. to clarify <laughs> so he's saying we're we're not allowed to take anything out of the pile or it he is he says deal? one thing he is well no he's very strongly implying that taking anything out of the pile would be uh probably counter to their their objective here. basically we basically what i'm getting from this is unless we solve the thing between the gatekeeper and them we're not getting anything done except we can't talk to the elders okay. unless we take this I'm sure if we go back and say that it's the Fey that took it and they have a message for the Elders, that we'll get to talk to the Elders. You they have a lot more faith in people with power than I do. I, I mean, think if we the say guards we turn us around and kick us out of the building. If we say we have a direct message from the Gatekeeper for the Elders, you think they're going to do that? I think they would probably never want any citizens to know about that. So yes, probably. Ooh, we might get murdered. I mean, I don't I think they're going to kill us, that. but I could certainly see them heavily encouraging us to get off the island. They don't want outsiders to really? meddle in their affairs, I'm, I would bet. And you think we're going to get in by taking back the wood or the tools? I think because having someone to vouch purpose. for us would be helpful, yes. What if we exchange the tools? Or something that was also precious. It is not like, so much the item wow. in specific as it is the compromising of our operation here. If an item is retrieved, say, it may persuade the islanders that they have no need to comply with us, that they can simply take what they wish back by force, as you have quite nearly done here. Not this would be dead. antithetical to the gatekeeper's objectives. We want your help, but... We need to get an audience with the gatekeepers. And the way we agreed to do that was to return an item. 
elder. It's a bit of a catch twenty two, really. We are yeah, we are stuck in a loop here. Okay. Go ahead and roll a persuasion check then. Me or Barnaby who is translating all of this. Uh I'll say Barnaby with advantage. They are your words, but it is his voice and inflection and everything that is posing this argument. So, with advantage... This is the one that keeps attacking you, the cat. <laughs> he looks like trouble. His name is Brody. He is trouble. <laughs> he sounds like trouble. With advantage, that's 18. 18? That's nothing. The other one's Armani. Monty? Oof. No, Armani. Oh, Armani. Also trouble. Uh, yeah, with an 18. Um, there's definitely some whispering between the two behind this lead figure, and one of them again will lean up and kind of whisper as he's contemplating this offer. Kind of nods. Very well, he'll say after a moment. One item that was taken can be returned, if only to serve as evidence that you have, in fact, spoken with the agents of the Keeper, and that you come bearing her words. But only one. So choose what you will, if he glances again at the toolkit and that will be it um are we just telling them that they need to stop reneging on their whole thing with the gatekeeper is that our message or is that our message i believe the message was things will escalate unless the gatekeeper's demands are met mm, yeah very well remembered within a week within a week <laughs> of today <laughs> correct Okay. And we do mean a, a, a week in this time frame, right? Not in some meta time frame where we're being controlled by puppet masters. They just kind of look uh -huh. at each other blankly. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. Do you mean a week starting today or a week starting this coming Monday? They just said coming today. <laughs> what is a Monday? Uh... <laughs> The, within a week okay. of this, this oh, for ghosty and week. This, the yeah. timer started already got it yeah the timers the timers tick talking so all right i think we are done here we will pass along your message and hopefully john it does not fall up. on deaf ears john will get up and let the little squiggly potato dude get to the chair as soon as you stand up he immediately just like fucking belly flops <laughs> underneath the chair and vanishes from sight and he'll, he'll grab the toolkit. Okay. I'm assuming John's only the only one that can probably lift it. Uh, Noelle, Noelle can carry it under her arm, but it's definitely, it's it's got some heft to it. I mean, you're probably, your shoulder's probably starting to, like, kind of cramp up. You're, like, having to, like, adjust it constantly. <laughs> John can I've, take it. I've got it if we, it's fine. Yeah, I, either way. I got a 10 in strength, all right? I'm not a little, I'm not a little baby. <laughs> She's not a little baby. It's just, it's just a big, heavy kit of tools. It's, it's like you know, you know, like the like your your fucking basic ass like Home Depot toolbox, the big one with all the wrenches and sockets and shit in it. You know, it's like carrying carrying that shit around is fucking. It's a pain in the ass. It's heavy. Um, but yeah. Uh, so you guys have the toolkit. Yes. <clears throat> and the uh the room is now bereft of boggles. They have vanished from sight. Uh, and the leaders are left still in here. here. They are oh, still standing their... here watching. What's their waiting. name? Or one of their names? That's a good question. <laughs> I think it's best if we don't get too familiar here. I believe we'll say. Ask them if we but can have Barnaby, their names. You know Barnaby's name. A name for a name? Give me a persuasion check. I'm not persuasive. <laughs> I think not, he will mm -hmm. say. 
Well, does this conclude your business down here? Yes, we will leave. Very well. Can I, before we go, just just vibe check on that whole conversation from what I could have gleaned? Like, does it seem like they're trying to trick us into doing something really stupid? <laughs> like, does it seem like we just got played? Does this does this feel like a bad idea? Like, are, is uh, it like, ah, oh, yeah, go tell the uh, elders that you have a message from the gatekeeper, and then they're just going to immediately imprison us or something like uh, that? <laughs> uh, yeah, give me give me an insight check, I guess. Okay. Not terrible. Uh, hey, do we have to mention the message before we get into the talk to the elders? We could just be like, hey, we need to speak with the elders. It's urgent. Yeah, I mean, I. I don't know how exactly we're going to do it, but I just want to vibe check this conversation first. Insight of 18. 18. Um, I will say there was definitely kind of three distinct shifts in mood over the course of this conversation. The first was under the calm emotion spell, Barnaby made the initial introduction and got your little deal brokered. Uh, and at that point, he was, you know, calm and amicable and willing to kind of de-escalate. Um, after the spell ended, you definitely picked up a serious level of annoyance um, and unease with the current situation. He was definitely on guard and watching you all very intently. Um, after you offered to help there was a, another shift and the energy shifted from kind of a paranoid uh, wariness of the party to sort of uh, a restrained satisfaction in a way that there was a certain um, there was a certain sort of like oh really moment that kind of you picked up you would have picked up on during the course of the conversation when he he heard you wanted to help and uh, you noted they seemed much more cooperative after that um, And there was definitely a level of feeling more in control of the situation from his side. Uh, just kind of reading the body language and what Barnaby was telling you he was saying. Um, definitely did not seem to regard you as much of a threat uh, as he did earlier. And beyond that, I think it's hard to say. Okay. However, you could probably connect with Aloran's bonkers insight with his answer about the gate watch. Um, if you wanted to. Oh, sure. I, I understand notes. that yeah. uh, the, the initial thing they said about the gate watch may have been untrue. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. I think we're just going to leave them to their business. Leave for helping out an interesting entity. <laughs> interesting is so a word. excited. <laughs> I did not say good. Well. But it is interesting. Fair. Hopefully your conversation with your elders goes smoothly. Good luck. Oh, and can I ask what race you are? <laughs> that is a somewhat personal question, <laughs> he says. My apologies. It's it's just I've never seen one of your like in this meeting. My kind are called darklings. We hail from a border realm on the edge of the wilds in the shadows beyond. Dwelling in the twilight between worlds. Gives us easy access your lens and others in very short order. It's also made us favorite mercenaries of the gatekeeper and others of her kind. I want to ask a ton of questions, but I imagine you'd probably find it rude, so I won't. You do have important business to attend to, don't you? Oh, you're right. Dang it. Uh, 
As I say, I hope your business goes smoothly and that you enjoy the rest of your time on this charming little island. Perhaps if things go well, the gatekeeper might reach out to you in time. Who's to say? Eldan. Farewell, the lot of you. And Mr. Barnaby Ray Otis the Third. I give him a nod. They get to know his name, but we don't get to know their name. They all kind of curtly nod and just kind of watch as you guys back out of the room. Because in some races, names have power. I don't know if this is one of them, but... Say goodbye to the potatoes. <laughs> Oh, they, they, they already gone. left. They bailed. They fucked off. Oh no! I, I was saying that to them. I was saying goodbye to the potatoes for me. <laughs> we may never see them again. We'll have to find more. He seems oh. so frustrated by that. <laughs> I didn't realize it was <laughs> like that. They are not exactly dependable. Hmm. Maybe we should mark them. How you can tell the difference? Can we go? <laughs> Yeah, really. <laughs> yeah, y'all, y'all, y'all can head out. Yeah, we've so, been saying goodbye for up, like ten minutes. Back up the stairs, uh, well, first floor of the uh, the Gate Watchers Tower. Uh, what do you want to do? Back to Lee. Uh, alone. Barnaby, I didn't know you spoke Sylvan. Oh, well, you never asked. Wants to look You're around and see. That's so exciting. If... You want to look around? Yes. What do you want to look for? Signs of the gate watch. Okay. Go ahead and give me an investigation check. I will assist Lauren in that. That's not good. <clears throat> I got assisted. Ha ha ha. Perfect nat 20, so the 21. Wow. wow. Okay, sure. <sighs> uh, Thank you for assistance. Because <laughs> my first roll was a six. Damn. <laughs> I was like... <laughs> okay, so 21. Um, before you guys leave, Aloran starts kind of circling this first floor, kind of inspecting every inch of it. Uh... The kitchen area has definitely not been kept up with. There's moldy food in the cabinets, like rotten mushroomy bread in a, in one cabinet. There's, uh, you know, a lot a lot of food here that's just been left unattended and abandoned, essentially. Um, again, you know the missing key on the hook, the uh, completely bare. Uh, mannequins standing by the uh, the front door. Making your way upstairs, looking around, you find uh, it is um, sort of a, a shared bunk. There are two beds uh, on this floor, um, with you know a nightstand and uh, a chest of drawers um, on each side. Um, looking around you know that there's drawers that are kind of been left askew um looking inside there's like a couple of loose shirts a pair of pants some socks that are just that look like they were kind of just left um there's spots at the foots of each bed that have like very old caked mud uh, that look like places where boots had been left kind of habitually. Um, both beds are uh, made and kind of a thin kind of coating of dust on, on each of them. Um, And on the sides of, or not on the sides, in, in between the, the two uh, nightstands, there is um, kind of a bookshelf uh, and a kind of a small, like, 
table with a couple of chairs, kind of like splitting the room in, in two. Uh, it's kind of like a like a work like bedroom kind of space. Um, there's uh, what well, looks like a couple of books missing off of the shelf, but this space is also seems to be almost completely like untouched in some time. Looks like it was left fairly cleaned up and Are there almost like it, someone expected to come back at some point. Are there any books of interest on the show? Um, there's a, a pretty decent collection of things on on display here. Uh, some of these seem to be uh, local bestiaries. There, there, there's a book talking about you know uh, creatures of the Emerald Isles. You know. Um, the kind of like common flora and fauna between the islands. Uh, there's um, a more general kind of political discourse on on the Emerald Coast uh, and the various cities that kind of line this this area. Uh, more interestingly, there are uh, a few books of um, Ferelli fairy tales. Uh, Various short stories detailing um, what seem to be oral legends passed down by the Ferelli elves uh, of this island, um, recounting all kinds of fairy stories uh, and encounters. Um, and there's another book on this shelf that probably jumps out at you, as it does not have a title. Uh, it's a fairly thick tome, leather bound, uh, and kind of paging through it, it looks to be entirely handwritten. Um, this looks like a log of some kind. And reading an entry or two, it becomes clear that this is sort of a daily log kept by the residents of this tower. I will take both books. Okay. I am going to leave, like, tuck a few silver underneath the books and scribble, like, a little note and be like, I'll bring it back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sure. So you're taking the, 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 the fairy tale book yeah. um, and the, uh, the Gladham Gate Watch log. Let me write that down real quick. If they come back, you're gonna be like, "Who the hell steals a log?" Can I look at the fairy tale book? I, I guess I assume yeah. I'm up there since I helped. Yeah, sure. And then, uh, gate watch log of Gladham. Yeah, Gladham gate watch log. Just to clarify then, so I understood your description of the room. I guess I'm not 100% mm -hmm. clear what we're gleaning exactly. So the room, the beds are made. Uh, the drawers are mostly empty. There's still some clothes in them, but they look like they were emptied out. Uh, there were boots at the foot of each bed that are not there presently. I mean, so far I'm gathering um, that they are not here, which... Yeah, we knew. Yeah, uh, I would say, like, what, what, where are we going with this? What do you imply? Whatever, whatever became of these people, uh, when they left, it it does not look like they left in a hurry. I'll say, like, you're you're not seeing that you know the beds are unkempt and they like just fucking disappeared. You know, there's no blood stains violent. on the wall, right? No blood stains on the wall. Like, it's all fairly clean and orderly. Uh, it looks like. Whenever they left, they probably expected to come back. Okay. And clearly haven't. I will say, though, I... I'd at say some that's the point, biggest takeaway. And Lauren is going to look at that log. And she's going to look at the very last few uh, entries. Okay. So, 
I don't know. Whenever you want we should we should like read while we walk probably to the yes. back to lead. Okay, that's fine. Um, so departing the uh, the Gatewatch Tower with these books in tow, making your way back across town towards Lee's uh, domicile, uh, looking over the last few entries. Um, you will learn a handful of things. Uh, it looks like this uh, place was tended to by two watchers. Um, and their names were... Bu, 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 um, Finrin. Uh, Finrin Kulanis. Uh, who seems to... Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll put these in the uh, okay. in the chat. Uh, and then Idrain Falsprit. Uh, Finrin looks like he was the senior uh, at this uh, watch facility, and Idrin uh, looks to have been uh, either an apprentice or just a new recruit or a new assignment. Like it, it's not super clear, but you can definitely tell. Like the uh, the relationship there is, is of a senior and his subordinate. Um, both of them elves. Uh, and both of them seem to be, uh, from what you're able to gather co from context here, they both seem to have been previous, previously just residents of Gladham. Uh, so they're, they're, they're from here. They're locals. Um, and looking at these last few entries specifically, uh, for several entries, um, it is just Edrin. Like you're you're paging back, uh, page after page after page. Edrin, 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 Edrin. All of these signed off by Edrin. Um, it's probably a solid like two, maybe three weeks uh, before you find the first entry, uh, the first recent entry by. Um, uh, the senior here, uh, Fenrin. And Fenrin's entry uh, makes note of an escalating uh, amount of fey activity in Gladham has been observed uh, and uh, otherwise reported and that he is intending to head into the jungles. Uh, and he name drops the gatekeeper directly here. He has every intention of uh, meeting with the gatekeeper and discovering what exactly the meaning of all of this is. Uh, and in the preceding day, in the uh, following days, um, Idrin notes uh, you know, continued Fey activity, still waiting for Fendrin to come back. Uh, after probably five days, there's a note of worry that starts to kind of creep into these entries. And after a fall, like a solid week, um, Idrin seems pretty confident that something happened. And he is now stuck unsure how to proceed without a superior officer and over the following week uh he notes that he attempted to speak with the elders and was rebuffed he attempts to speak with some of the locals trying to get information about uh their experiences with the local fae and is met with short replies or um i you know total denial uh people have been very cold to him he notes since he joined the watch and as frustrating as it is he is determined to try and solve this and so by the end of this week uh Idrin has mustered his courage and decided he too is going to step into the jungles see if he can't find his uh his senior uh, Fenrin and save him from whatever fate's befallen him. And if he's lucky, maybe they'll figure out what's going on with all the Fae as well. And that last entry is uh, dated to about three or four weeks ago. One last question. Did Idrin specify his intent, like how he intended to get an audience with the elders or did you just say i'm just gonna go try and talk to the elders 
Or was he uh, like, I'm going to go tell them about the gatekeeper or ask about the gatekeeper or something like that? Adrian was not terribly thorough in the log. Okay. Uh, he just makes a note of uh, attempted to speak with the elders today, uh, was turned away at the door. Um, gotcha. Having similar difficulties talking with uh, locals about their encounters with Faye. Um, okay. <clears throat> you know what? I will say, with a 21 on that investigation, something will jump out to you, Aloran, as you're skimming this. A familiar name crops up in Edrin's logs. You catch sight of Adlar mentioned in here. Okay. Oh, wow. uh, he is noted as the only other islander willing to speak with him regarding uh, the Fey activity. As Adlar, it would seem, uh, was attempting to catch some of the Fey in the act. So far, however, he has been successful. There was a conversation, uh, it would seem, about possibly joining forces. Uh, but Idrin is not much of a hunter himself. Um, he is more of a fighter, and Adlar felt he would be more successful uh, working without a loud, cumbersome, heavily armored knight <laughs> clomping along behind him. All right, I'm good on question. So, I feel like either way, we're probably going to be going into this jungle after this gatekeeper. Anyways, that's Lauren's take. I think Lauren <laughs> was right. And I think... It's a Lauren's hot take from this. I was probably <laughs> I a bit to naive <laughs> assuming the gate watch for all right. But... Still learning. There is nothing wrong with hoping for the best. That's fair. Just be sure to prepare for the worst. Very good! Yeah. Burberry is Burberry so just... excited right now. Yeah, Burberry is <laughs> in like a fucking boils. chipper mood today, it has, apparently. It has been an exciting day. We got to meet strange little boggle creatures. We got to see a darkling, which I've never met in person. Apparently, we're on some sort of errand for a gatekeeper between this realm and the next. It's exciting! I certainly prefer this to being stuck in a mine. <laughs> and we didn't even set anything on fire! <laughs> And there's yeah. no spiders. There's 100% less spiders. spiders in this quest. There was like. only one spider on this quest, and it was a lord. That's true. I know. I was yeah, only a little spider. <laughs> All right, should we take a break and then meet up with Lee? Good plan. Uh, let's be back here by 1030 and resume our, our game here, see what happens. Okay. Mm -hmm.
All right, no, stay back. I'm having Pokemon talks now. <laughs> it's Pokemon time. Always Pokemon. Uh, okay, so heading back to Lee's house. Toolkit in tow. Correct? Yes. All right. So. Uh, we left it at the, at the gate watch. Ah, shit. <laughs> you entered to um, find a bloody corpse. No. <laughs> and a brick through the window with a note. It says, lulls from the gatekeeper. <laughs> uh. <laughs> it's not very subtle. <laughs> no, there's just they said it would escalate. Thing. That's true. There's just a magic thing that says major luck. By the end of the, the week, it's going to just be murder. Yeah, just straight murder. Okay, and to show you where Siri is. I know, demand I sweeties, and when I demand things. sweeties, I expect them promptly. Uh, so, we are uh, all assembled, heading back to Lee's place. You have the toolkit in tow, and it uh, doesn't take super long to cross town. Not an issue. Easily able to get up the steps and to the front door. Knock, knock, knock. Uh, and it's been like half an hour at most, I think, since you guys last saw her. Um, she's made herself another cup of coffee and she like just opens the door. She's like, oh, oh, you're back. Well, um, oh my God, you found it. Um, and there's that moment where like she freezes and you can tell she is fighting back tears so hard. Like they just instantly started to well up and just thank you so much. And she takes, takes the, the toolbox very mm -hmm. gingerly from you very heavy box <laughs> okay well we're just gonna put that down uh sets that inside um and just doesn't even have words she just she just sets sets the coffee cup down on the banister and uh, who's at the front of the party probably me because i handed it to her okay yeah uh she's yep. just gonna very just throw her arms around you, Noel. I'll just give you a big hug. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, of course. I um, I'm sorry. Uh, she'll she'll kind of start collecting herself. Do you need I... a minute? No, 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 no. I'm I'm okay. I thank you. I I just wasn't sure I would ever see those tools again. So um, it's uh, the last thing you know. Father left before uh. He uh, passed away, so it's, it's it's good to see them again. Thank you, thank thank you so much. Um, Is that memory ask favored you today? <laughs> and thank him too, I suppose. Her. Her. <laughs> Definitely doesn't know what you're talking about, but she, you can tell she doesn't want to offend anyone. <laughs> so she's like, okay. Um, uh, a lady of lost things. He would be most helpful um, today. Uh, I I I can get back to work now. Um, so thank you, thank you for that. I suppose you'll be wanting your your reward. Uh, yeah. Um, if you you said you would p perhaps put in a good word with us with. A good word for us with Lorne, right? Uh, Is that the right name? Yes, the uh, the attendant at the the shrine of Elise. Um, Actually, just he, just uh, refresh my memory on a character. She said she was going to talk to Lorne, who was going to talk to someone else to get us a meeting. He was going. To, he was going to talk to the elders. He, Lor he so Lorne is Lorne is the shrine attendant at at the shrine of Elise. Mm -hmm. uh, he's of a major figure in town okay. um so he he would be the connection to the 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 elders um, out of character do we make the do we make it known that it's time sensitive i was gonna actually ask that next i was gonna see how quickly we could put this together um but yeah so you were gonna set us up with lauren is that right um sure yeah uh, do you do you want to talk to him now? Uh, we were thinking maybe sooner the better. Today, if possible. Okay. Um. Yeah. Let me. Uh. Let me. Let me get my shoes, and and we can. Uh, we can walk down there together. Um. 
and she'll just kind of give me one sec and head back inside. Um, second later, she'll come back out with some sandals on and grab her coffee cup off the, the banister of the railing and just kind of start walking downstairs with you and making her way down the street. Okay. So, um, where where did you where did you find it? That was uh, a lot faster than I thought. I thought that would take. We found it under an upturned chair in a basement. That's strangely specific and weirdly uninformative. Um, but I suppose it's good. How did you find it, even? I mean... Well, we told I you guess... about Burberry's magic. Magic, then. Gods, that would be so helpful to have around. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. It's a little finicky at bits. I mean, it's better than nothing. <laughs> I, I didn't find anything with nothing for the past, you know, week and a half. For what it's Magic worth, if you, you, if you are friends with any clerics at this shrine, they could probably do it too. <laughs> well, Magic like that's not exactly... It's not the way. <laughs> common spread. I think Father Lorne might actually know a little bit. I mean, he, he seems to be on the same sort of wavelength as, as, as you are, um, Mr. Burberry. Uh, he's not necessarily... Well, not necessarily. <clears throat> he's he's from here. He knows the way. He grew up with the way, you know. But he, he studied, you know, um, uh, ecclesiology in, in, in Hallavale, you know, in the on the mainland. Um, for a time before he came back and, and opened the shrine, so he, he I think it, he's um, versed in, in a certain Wait, amount of. Learned the way in what way did you say? No, no, no. He grew up here, you know, with the way, same as as everyone on the island. But he he studied um, in Hallowvale, uh, on 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 the mainland. Um, right, right. I actually want to go there at some point. He says it's a lovely area, you know, surrounded by mountains, beautiful valley, clean rivers, forests, farmlands. It's very picturesque, he says. I'm not sure if you could be more picturesque than this, but he kind of glances around all the palm trees and everything. It doesn't sound bad, though. Um, and uh, just kind of make small talk as you guys make your way to the shrine and... Coming up to the shrine, uh, it is as you last saw it, you know, um, not a terribly large structure, single story. It's kind of like a big pagoda. Um, or it's a, what's the fucking word? It's not Zamboni. It's a, a gazebo. There we go. Um, no, there's a Z in there. The gazebo, no. I, I was trying to find it. I was like, it's not Zamboni. Fuck. Um, it's, it's a big, you know, open air kind of gazebo structure. Um, curtains drawn along the whole thing though it's like kind of cordoned off um, and uh, she'll just kind of like head up the steps and kind of pull a curtain aside look around it's like a, Father Father Lorne you here? and uh, there was a, a man's voice from inside it's like hey, I wasn't expecting you please, please. Um, I, I brought guests and she'll kind of pull the curtain further aside and allow you guys to step in uh, and yeah, Burberry, it's it's a familiar sight. You know, you've seen your share of shrines. Um, this one's not terribly different from the uh, the shrine in Helmfirth. Uh, it's definitely bigger. You know, this is big enough for an assembly to kind of take place in, whereas the shrine in Helmfirth is much more of a kind of a street shrine, a way shrine. Um, big enough for offerings, but not much else. This one, you've got sitting room, you know, for 20, 30 people. Uh, the altar at the back, um, very sizable, lots of uh, plants and candles set up. Um, and behind the altar there is a very badly defaced wooden statue. Uh, very similar to the ones that you've seen uh, in Lee's backyard. Uh, much like the unfinished one that she's got currently at her workshop. Um, this female figure, um, kind of laurel in the hair, uh, long braids kind of running down the sides of her, uh, 
over her shoulders. Um, this very flowy gown, flowers kind of trailing up it. Um, but it has been scratched, gouged. Uh, the eyes have been like very crudely, like just X'd out with like a chisel, just fucking chung, 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 these big X's in the eyes. Um, there's like a couple of what look like forks just jammed into the sides of the head to make these like little springy things sticking out of it. Um, and just like bizarre abstract drawings in, in um, what looks like uh, either a, a dark paint or, or charcoal or something just kind of like up and down the body of the statue. Um, and Father Lorne was just kind of standing there contemplating it, it looked like, before he kind of turned to see all of you stepping inside. Uh, and just, oh, 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 goodness. And he very, very hurriedly steps in front of the statue. He's like, oh, well, 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 welcome, welcome all. Lee, what, what is the meaning of this? Father Lorne, they found my tools. I'm sorry. They, I can, I can finish work on the new statue. I think they, they found my tools. I can... I can get going. This is, um, I'm sorry, I, I, I'm starting in the wrong place. Uh, these fine people from out of town, they agreed to help, and they did it in literally just this morning. They showed up, and they just found them. Um, this is uh, John, Barnaby, Noel, Aloran, Burberry. Um, it's all in, like, no time flat. Um, well, that's fantastic. I, I'm... I'm so glad to hear that. Thank, thank all of you. He still looks a little confused. They were hoping perhaps they could talk with you um, uh, in exchange for their, their help here. So is that all? I mean, a little more, but I, I, I think it's for them to explain, really. I just said I would help them. We just the had a simple today. request for you, sir. Well, um, you've certainly done uh, the shrine here a great service. I, I, I suppose you realize already. Kind of glances back at the broken statue behind him. We've seen you the replacements, really uh, at least partially done. It's going to be beautiful. That is uh, good to hear. Lee kind of blushes off to the side. Well, um, this is very impromptu, but I, I, I am in your debt, it would seem. Um, what, what can I do for all of you? I hope you're enjoying your time here in Gladham so far, at least. It's been amazing. That's good. That's good. Glad to hear it. Uh, well, uh, like I said, our request is simple. We, since arriving, have been trying to find an audience with the elders of your island. Uh, uh, I think I see where this is going, yes. Well, that is a, a difficult thing uh, for the outside world to achieve. So we have learned. I've, our friend here, uh, Mr. Barnaby, I just uh, ran over to him, he has, had, has ended up in quite the predicament, and we believe it has something to do with your island. And we are hoping... Someone who's so? more knowledgeable about this place might be able to answer some questions on his behalf. Well, what, what seems to be the trouble exactly, Mr. Barnaby? Uh, I, I hope you found the islands to your liking, at least. Oh, it's fine, it's fine. There's just a little, little problem I got trying to been figure it out. Say you wandered into a forest, and then when you exited, five years had passed without being gone for five years. That's the problem I'm dealing with right now. Also, you were on a different continent. Also that, yeah. I got spat out somewhere else. Uh, Father Lauren gets very, very tight-lipped, wide-eyed at that. I see quite the conundrum. 
You okay? You look like you just ate something sour. Well, um... Kind of glances over to Lee, who just kind of nods and <laughs> gestures over to Barnaby and... Uh, just, like, paying attention to something else. Yeah. It's like when someone's on the phone in the room with you. Yeah, <laughs> Father Lorne is just like... Um, I am so sorry, Mister uh, Mister Barnaby. That that is uh, that is certainly an ordeal. Uh, forgive me for saying you do seem to have come out uh, all right after all of that. You you seem to be in in fine health, um, which is heartening after such an event you know um, stories about these things do not usually end quite so well and I suppose I'm this, is, eyes a little bit. this is the matter know. with which you wish to speak to the elders yes well We're not looking for solutions from the elders, mind you. We're just looking for answers. Um, yeah, I'd certainly like the answer to to if the beast that done killed my paws on here. Real nice. Here in Gladham. Well, somewhere on these islands. <sighs> there is a very clear calculus happening behind the eyes right now. Uh, it's kind of rapid darting as he's he's assessing the situation. Reading what he can't tell. <laughs> there is certainly uh, a lot that could be said about your situation, Mr. Barnaby, though I am not certain it is my place to say. Um, I got a few choice words, but uh, I ain't gonna say them. Ma taught me better than that. Yes, well, um... <sighs> the Elders are certainly uh, the best source for information of that uh, that matter. Um... Goodness, is it hot in here? <laughs> um, and that's why you're going to take us to talk to them, right? Yeah, well, uh, the thing there, you know, it, they are they are they're very busy people, you know, and, and and the island certainly has a lot of um, lawn. And at that point, Lee kind of pipes up, just kind of meets his eyes. She looks kind of cross, kind of. Um. <sighs> no, our uh, Burberry is going to to whisper to Noel and say. Should I calm him? <laughs> oh, I don't know if using magic on someone who is wary of us is going to earn us points. <laughs> yeah, that would be a bad idea. This one is people. Um, I appreciate the thought, though. <sighs> it's just not freaking him from freaking out. <laughs> okay, all right, all right, all right. Um, the elders, yes. Yes, I, I can... I can get you to the elders. Um, I must warn you. Uh, I cannot make any promise as to how much time they have at their disposal currently. As, as I say, they are uh, busy folk um, handling all manner of business regarding the island and its, its comings and goings. But um, I can... I can I can set up a meeting. Well, excellent. That'd be excellent. Um, Jinx. <laughs> I suppose you wanted this uh, so sooner than later. Yes. As soon as possible. As possible would be nice. <laughs> Jinx. <laughs> oh, now we're just now we're just now we just uh, owe equal, each other yeah. a, a drink. I think. Lee yep. just kind of chuckles behind you guys. Um, Lorne, he... Uh, well, um... 
I suppose better rip the bandage off now than drag this out. Uh, suppose... Are you free now? I, I, do you have any prior engagements? We, we could just try... Try now. Let's, let's try let's now. Just go now. Let's try now. Let's just go now. Let's just go now. It's fine. It's it's totally fine. Uh, he... Um, I almost hope he had like, just a little bit of hope in his voice. Like, are you busy? <laughs> busy? <laughs> Can I put this off at all? No? Okay. Let's just be done with it. Uh, he will uh, put out the small number of candles that he had lit um, and just uh, grab um, a little satchel that he had he had brought with him it looks like and throw it over his shoulder and shall we? It's not terribly far. I'm sure you've been to the uh, summer square by now. Um, let's, let's, let's be off. And uh, he'll make his way out and uh, begin leading you guys down the streets um, as you go. Me. Mm. Good luck, she'll call to you as she kind of turns back to the statue and just kind of sadly just shakes her head. Um, Lorne will uh, kind of adjust his pace to kind of walk beside you, Barnaby. Uh, and uh, he he will kind of um, nervously begin to ask. Uh, I, just so that I'm coming into this with with full information here you you're you're not looking for solutions to this problem just information what, what, what sort of what sort of information are you are you looking for from from the elders about your your predicament well i'd i'd ideally like to find out uh how i done got shot five years in the future and also i'd like to find out if like I mentioned, the beast that killed my paws here has uh, got some got some words for that that fella right there. Uh, well, um, supposing I might be able, at liberty at least, to answer the question of beasts to the best of my ability. Uh, what, what sort of beast do you think it was? I I am not a, a, a woodsman myself, but I, I am certainly. A, a, I know exactly what kind of beast it was. Well, I don't actually know, but I got a picture of its backside. You have a picture? Uh, not, of a pi not a picture, a drawing. You have a drawing of the picture's rear end. It's got a few other details, not just the butt. That really fell off quick. <laughs> I know exactly what it was. Well, I don't know what it was. <laughs> but I know what his ass looked like. <laughs> And let me tell you, it was clenched. It's not an ass you'll ever forget. <laughs> um, it's, it's something that had scales, fur, wings, horns, claws, and could breathe fire. That is quite the creature. Yes. Uh, well, I, I can say with some certainty, <laughs> I, I've never heard of such a creature here on Gladham. Um, so that is a relief. <laughs> uh, he probably realizes he's the only one laughing at that and very quickly shuts up. Um, well, uh, regarding your predicament, I, I should prepare you. You know, the, the, the matters that you're asking about here, they are, they are just particular enough to the elder's concerns for the island's safety and security. You know, it's not the sort of thing that they can uh, be open with anyone, just anyone who, who comes asking, you understand. Um, given the good turn you've done, you know, I, I, I think that that looks good on, on your, your request. I just, I, I can't promise anything once we get inside. I just want to prepare you for that, he says. I can't promise you the sunrise will rise tomorrow, but we all hope it will. What are you doing to the sun? <laughs> Did you just try to kill him? <laughs> no. What are you doing to the sun? It's, uh, it's, it's a turn of phrase from where I am. That is a very ominous one, Mr. Mr. Barnaby. 
forgive me for being a little taken aback. It's kind of cool. Uh, but but look, here we are. Uh, and you guys have crossed the summer square at this point um, and made your way up towards the front door of the uh, the elder house where this is the, the, the long house with the thatched roof and the numerous colorful banners kind of on posts uh, lining the, the walkway out front. Um, and there are a handful of sentries. Um, they're not garbed in anything in particular. You know, they, they seem to be wearing pretty comfortable street clothes. Uh, but most of them do have uh, at least like a red sash um, kind of tied off over the shoulder. Uh, and either um, a curved blade uh, and or um, a bow and, and quiver uh, on their belts. Um, and they are just sort of standing at attention. You know, just men and women. Um, lightly armored, if if at all. You know, it, it seems more formal than it does really uh, any um, real uh, kind of military presence. Uh, but the two standing by the front doors, these very tall, elaborately carved double doors. Uh, they do approach your party as you guys um, walk up to this uh, structure, and one of them will kind of hold out a hand, just like, Father Lorne, these uh, strangers you bring to the Elder House, I hope you have a good reason. Says, yes, well, they, they do wish to speak with the Elders, so I thought it best perhaps to bring them here, didn't I? Father Lorne, they are not from this island, and very quickly they begin uh, conversing in Elvish. Uh, those of you who speak Elvish will understand uh, as this continues. Um, look, they have done a good turn to the island. I believe they come bearing no ill intent. This one here, he gestures to Barnaby, has fallen through the boundary of the Feywild. Five years he's lost in that realm. Uh, the guard kind of looks wide-eyed at that and uh, he says, are you certain this can be trusted? And he says, Lee brought them here, all right? She, she's done so much work for us, all right? She's done so much for the island. She asked them for help. They solved the matter within the hour. They could they, they could be of, of service, I think, to the elders, all right? I, I think that this, this, this could do all of us some good, perhaps, if we actually get some, some assistance, maybe. At the very least, if the elders say no, they say no. And and that's the end of it, isn't it? Uh, at that point, the guard is kind of just a little taken aback. The, the energy coming off of Lorne is, is a little erratic. He does seem kind of frantic in this. And, and the guard just kind of backs up. He's like, look, it, your call, man. I'm not fighting you. <laughs> he just puts up a hand and steps away. Too early uh, for this shit. Yeah, Lorne just... <sighs> well, shall we? He turns back to all of you, back in common, and oh, yes. uh, makes his way towards the door. Uh, the guards remain where they're standing and just kind of watches you walk past uh, the one that he was talking to directly, uh, watching you, Barnaby, very, like, wide-eyed, uh, in awe, almost. As we're walking um, in, Noel's not going to talk to him directly, but just... Knowing that he is in earshot, whispered to herself in Elvish, five years in the Fey realm. Just so this he is knows. so that Lorne can hear you. Yeah, just so he knows that I heard that conversation. There is a, a little like twitch over his shoulder uh, as he kind of like starts to look over, stops himself realizing, and just adjusts and keeps walking. Okay. <laughs> um. And passing through these double doors, uh, you find yourselves in um, a large single-storied uh, building. This this structure really is just kind of a massive meeting hall, it looks like. Um, it doesn't look as though there's really any other rooms divvying off of it like there, there may be like a couple of uh of archways that kind of denote little storage alcoves off to the side so for the most part it is one long continuous room from end to end in this long house um in the center of the room there is uh a very long table uh lined with chairs uh currently empty 
No one's sitting there, nothing on the table whatsoever. Um, behind the table, on the far side of the chamber, um, there is uh, a raised sort of dais uh, and um, this round table with seats around it. Uh, and at that secondary table, you can see that there are a number of figures um, kind of sitting uh, and talking, um, shuffling through papers, uh, and seeming to go about some manner of business uh, on that, that side of the chamber. Uh, as the doors have opened, however, um, they will kind of all kind of turn from where they are sitting and look over uh, towards your party. Uh, and one of them will stand. Um, and as the doors close and the light from outside fades, you can just barely see uh, in this fairly dark chamber, uh, this figure backlit by uh, the sconce in the middle of that table. Um, this older elvish man uh, wearing very uh, colorful, um, intricately patterned robes. <laughs> Uh, there is an, a mixture of um, very like bold geometric patterns uh, interwoven with uh, you know floral um, vine work, uh, all kinds of like plant embellishments um, and a, a, some animal figures kind of hidden here and there. It's a very very busy, uh, colorful uh, ensemble that he's got on. Um, and uh, kind of steeples his fingers and calls out across the room Father Luan you have brought strangers into the other's house I hope you have a good reason uh, and um, Lauren kind of does a short bow and says uh, El, uh, Elder Mirakian these are indeed outsiders, but they come with questions and uh, good intent. I, and he begins to kind of round this long table to make his way over, and you realize that there's not a break in here to actually walk directly up to this table. It's it's going to be a whole fucking thing to get around it. Um, he's kind of having to raise his voice as he walks to, because it's starting to echo through this chamber. Uh, starting to strike you maybe it's a little inconvenient a little over i appreciate over, they've really committed uh, to the like sitting around a table ominously aesthetic yeah. at all times yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh he'll say um these outsiders have done a great service for my shrine in fact uh in hopes of proving their good intent to you uh and the other elders of the house um If it would be uh, so kind of you as to perhaps render some small aid, uh, some answers to their question, I think uh, it would be more than enough to repay them for the kindness they've done. Uh, at this point, a woman will stand up from the table. Um, Dark-skinned elf. Um, very thick black dreadlocks that kind of run down the back of the head. Um, she's wearing a similar... Uh, sort of um, very colorful, intricate robe uh, to uh, Merakian, uh, the first one. Uh, she would say, oh, Father Lorne, if you deem it so necessary to intrude as you have, I should hope that their situation is certainly dire enough to warrant uh, this breach of protocol. Uh, and Rakin will say, Easy, Kira. We do have guests. He will turn to you and kind of spread his arms, offer you a smile. Welcome to the Elder's house, he will say. And to Gladham. I hope you are finding your time on the island well. It is uh, a beautiful place to stay. I'll, I'll also bow, just sort of similar to how, to, how the, uh, oh, what's his name? Lorne did. Lorne. Okay. Well, please, 
There is no need to stand gawking in the doorway. Come around, take a seat. We can discuss your matters uh, in some level of comfort. He will offer for you to follow Lorne, if you so choose. So, making your way around the table, um, he will uh, step down from his DS and begin grabbing a chair uh, from the long table in the center of the hall and carrying it up with him to the round table. Um, Kira, the second figure, seems a little off-put by this, but after he's made a second trip down, she'll follow suit, and they'll assemble enough chairs for the five of you and Lorne to, uh, to take a seat next to them. Um, so just the two? Uh, so sitting up there, there are four figures currently. Okay. But um, just the two that are currently engaged. The two that, that stood up, yes. Uh, the other two um, are another man and another woman. Um, and they will just kind of nod to you as you approach them. Uh, and take your seats. <clears throat> but they will not say anything else. Uh, Merakian will return to his chair as soon as everyone is seated and set himself down. So, Lorne says you have done a great service for his shrine. Tell is me, he, what is it that you have done for him? Is he addressing any of us specifically or just... Just generally to the table. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we have been trying our best to be helpful since we arrived. We know how uh, preciously you all guard your time. Well, uh, it is not so much a matter of guarding the time. Uh, we do not want to trouble our guests with the matters of the island's uh, internal workings. There is no need for you to take our troubles with you as you go. Oh. After all, you are our guests. But, if you are determined to help, we will not say no. So, what have you done? What did we just do? We have collected the woodworking tools for the shrine to Alice, so that they mm. may replace their damaged statue. You mentioned this to me, Lorne, some time ago. This uh, statue of yours was damaged. Yes, the, uh, the third one this month, you will say. Yes. And these tools that go missing, uh, this was more recent. Yes, this, this was in the past week. But the strangers have retrieved them. Yes. Yes, sir. They, 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 they certainly have. <laughs> that was very kind of you. And you do this in desire to show your uh, goodwill to the island. Exactly. Because you are coming to ask us sensitive questions that perhaps we are not wishing to share the answers to. You're trying to solve a mystery. Get in the door. I'm okay. trying to rewrite history. <laughs> Swear to God, David. <laughs> I mean, if Barnaby gets sent back in time. <laughs> Well, you are here. You have our attention. Oh. What is this mystery? Would you like to explain, Barnaby? I'll explain the way I just did to uh, the other one. Say you're walking through a forest, and then uh, <laughs> you come out on through. You come out through the other side, and it's been uh, five years since you wandered the forest, even though it didn't feel like it, and. Uh, you were on one continent, and now you were on another continent. That's kind of what happened to uh to me. Well, a noticeable, not exactly. There is a noticeable change in the demeanor at the table as all four of these figures kind of sit back in their chairs. Their faces grow more serious, stern. Um, you see the two figures uh, that did not stand kind of lean into each other and kind of murmur a little bit. Are there guards in this room that we can see? Uh, give me a perception check. Oh, I should also note that, uh, I should also note, note the reason I went into the forest. I've been chasing after this monster. I got a, I got a, I got a good idea. Well, I got a drawing of what it, what it is, and that's what I was chasing after. 
Maximo got into this whole mess. I see. Uh, Marakian considers this for a moment. Well, you have certainly uh, come to us with a question that is not one we are inclined to answer for just anyone. <sighs> would, it, would it help if I uh, told you the other few things that we've done recently? Around here? Sure. Uh, he will yield the table to you, but he definitely like leans over to Kira next to him, and they kind of begin a little whispering between the two of them uh, uh, as you begin talking. Bar Barnaby is going to get a whisper in his ear that says, you might not want to mention about the message until after you're done with your question. Wait, the what till I'm done? The, the message from the gatekeeper. Oh, yeah. You might not mentioning that. You might want to wait until after you're done with your question answer. Yeah. Um, Did I see any guards, by the way? Uh, what was your perception check? 26. <laughs> Oof. Uh, yeah, kind of glancing around the room. Um, 25. <laughs> In case they had a stat uh, check. Sure. This does primarily seem to be a single level building. Um, however, looking around, there is there is sort of like a raised uh, walkway kind of along the perimeter of the room. Uh, under that walkway is where these sort of little storage alcoves seem to be. Um, looking up at that alcove, uh, up at those walkways in the dark, you can definitely kind of glimpse there are a handful of humanoid figures standing, uh, bows at the ready, not drawn, but at arrows least. out, okay. standing watch from above in the dark. You're muted, Chani. Just heads up. Oh, I said, oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, Burberry. So you're you're casting message to um, Barnaby? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, as you try to be surreptitious about this little thing, uh, you will see uh, Kira actually kind of pause her conversation and like lock eyes with you before she kind of does a little twist of her fingers and you hear a whisper in your own ear. You might be more careful about casting spells in the presence of the leaders of this place, little one. It might be seen as discourteous. Um, oh, no. Where were you? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, just whisper, whisper back. Barnaby has a surprising lack of courtesy of... Uh, courtesy sometimes. I was just about to remind him. Barnaby's the uncourteous one. Pass the what? buck. <laughs> I'll take out on Barbary is going to respond. Apologies. One could say the same thing about speaking about another person in a language they do not speak. Oh. <laughs> the guards draw their bows. You get, the, you get that like that I see. Like her eyes widen and she fucking is just like squinting hard Dang. at you. Well, I never. <laughs> you yeah. A uh, Lauren bonked the thing once. Burberry bonked Kira twice. <laughs> it's been a lot of bonking going on. Oh. But Multiple. he will. He will stop. <laughs> Anyways, we Sorry, uh, we did deal with these uh with these goblins that uh, were being a problem. We took care of them, and then uh, we also cleared out the mind of a big old spider problem you done been having. Uh, at this uh, one, the male figure who has not spoken yet will kind of sit up. I have heard of the troubles on the edge of town with these matters. You did well to take care of these. I assume that Dornan was uh, his usual appreciative self for your assistance in this matter. There's kind of a small smile as he speaks. Yeah, close up. enough. 
Dornan's the one that runs the the resort, right? No, Dornan is the the mine owner. Mine owner. Oh. You might not want to mention Dornan. Yeah, I was I was gonna leave him out of this. <laughs> Uh, for what it's worth, so th this third figure, this man who's spoken up, um, older elf, uh, shaved head, near shaved. Um, there is definitely like speckles of gray in the sideburns of, of the stubble that's coming co coming back. Um, dark, dark skin, heavy brow, uh, big, big smile, very toothy grin. Um, uh, kind of a weirdly familiar kind of face to him. It's kind of hard to put, put your finger on what it is. Oh, no, no, I already know. It's Doran's dad. Dornan? <laughs> yeah, this is Doran's dad right here we're talking to, because he uh, comes from money. Spent money. He perked up when they mentioned the mine, because his son's struggling. So he's like, oh, you fixed his my, my boy's problem? Are you <laughs> guessing, or is this a secret that you've revealed via your extensive notes? I'm guessing, but I am pretty good at guessing stuff. Mm -hmm. And, um... I am pretty positive that's what that is right there. Okay. Because he looks familiar, too. Let's just hope, if that's true, that Dornan didn't whine about us to his dad. <laughs> <laughs> dad, can I borrow an extra 2,000 gold? <laughs> These adventurers came by, and they're, they're, they're asking for more money. I don't have enough money, Daddy. Daddy. I promised them 500, and they want more. <laughs> Daddy, there's too many spiders, Daddy. <laughs> Daddy. Anyways, uh, I trust that Dornan was his usual appreciative self. Or less. That sounds about right. I hope in the end that you are fairly compensated for your efforts. It is not an easy thing to squeeze that out of him. We're going to be finishing up uh, what we started here. We got to wait for the bonds to. Uh... Calm down a bit in there. Oh, you're not even done yet. Well, uh, we're well, done, but... See it through. Oh, we had to kill about, what was it, 400 spiders, uh, spider eggs? Uh, fire was the best way to make sure that they were all gone. Yep. And fire plus mine equals lots and lots of smoke. It's been complicated. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean no offense. It sounds like an ordeal. I am... Um... Glad at least that someone was able to take care of it. Should be the last we hear of it. Am I wrong? He kind of looks to the rest of the table. Um, the woman next to him kind of snickers a little bit, uh, but uh, Kira and Rakian are just kind of like fair. <laughs> Kira still just fucking daggers at you, Burberry, right now. You've made a friend. Um, <laughs> he stopped. Yeah. Um, at this point, uh, this third man will kind of lean forward. I am not introduced myself. Gin Lemin Nuda. He will uh, extend a hand to you, Burberry. Uh, Burberry, like, pauses and then shakes it back. <laughs> <laughs> and it's one of those, like, it, it's a weak ass handshake. I'm not gonna, like... It's kind of a flimsy little. Sure, sure. Like, he's not trying to be disrespectful. It's just like, oh, touching. Okay. 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 I mean, when, when he takes your hand, Burberry, he doesn't, like, give you, like, a hearty shake. Like, he'll he'll very gingerly take the hand that you offer and just thank you in part ways. Um, it's a pleasure. It would seem that uh, these outsiders have been hard at work since they arrived here at the island. kind of look around. Forgive me for saying so, but they do not strike me as the type to be, uh, how you say, saboteurs. I think perhaps we can afford a small amount of courtesy to Mr. Barnaby in his situation. Would be most appreciative. Merakian kind of grimaces, but... Well... If you are comfortable sharing such secrets, Kinlamin, then perhaps that is what we shall do, Mr. Barnaby. You say you vanished into the woods. 
We emerged five years later, a world away. Yeah, that pretty much covers it. Well, it sounds to me as though you have stumbled into the fair wild and just as easily somehow stumbled out, which is no mean feat. I should tell you now. What you have accomplished is something rather miraculous. Many who lose themselves in the wilds do not ever return. The trees, I guess. That might, that might have helped. Yes. Here on Gladon, or here on Ferrier, I should say, uh, Ginlam and Vol kind of chime in. Uh, the Fair Wild is always close at hand. The jungles here, they are very old. Older than the first of our settlements here. Far older. But whatever it is about this place that draws the wilds out, it is a thing that we must impress upon our children to respect, to be careful, to stay out of the jungles. It is far too easy to stumble in and never come back. So we have the way. Kind of gesture towards the front doors. Through the way, we teach our community how to coexist with the wilds and the beings that live there. <laughs> to pay homage, proper respect, to give particular care to the things they count sacred. <laughs> it is important that you follow the way as long as you live this close to a place full of things Great and terrible. If you are good to them, they will be good to you. If you cross them, they will not rest until your life is theirs. They can be very spiteful. But you follow the you follow the way and you'll be okay. And that was slogan. He kind of looks around the table, big smile on his face. None of the other elders are smiling. It'll catch on eventually. All right, I'm elected. Thank you. So, somehow you fall through. Step into the woods, lose yourself. And miraculously make your way out. These things are known to happen in old forests. In this way, forests all over the world are connected through the Feywild. If you hypothetically were to immerse yourself in the way to curry favor with the fae who live there you might find a guide you might find the true way to the fae wild a way to walk there and back without ever getting lost without losing any time Hypothetically, there is a way to do this. And it is important that outsiders 
who come to the island asking questions are not simply taught this way without proper vetting, if you understand my meaning. So forgive my comrades for their less than stellar hospitality. He kind of pointedly looks at the others at the table. But their caution is not unwarranted. It would be a dangerous thing for an enemy, say, to find passage to the fair wilds without issue, without any way for us to protect ourselves from an attack in the rear. So what is it that you are looking for, Mr. Barnaby, exactly? Well, I'm looking for the answers to a few questions. As I said, I was uh, chasing after this beast that uh, killed my paw while I was out in, the, out in the wilds. And trying to figure out if it's around here because uh, I have to have a few words with it, so to say. I'm, he's going to pull out his uh, drawing of it. <clears throat> Does the beast have hind quarters for a face? No, he's I only got of, it from the back. Squinting. Uh, he's only got it from the back. Uh, yes. But if you can kind of see here, as he just kind of points to it, it's got scales, fur, wings, horns, claws, and it could breathe fire. I do remember that. That's something you don't forget every day. At this point, Meraki will take the picture, too, to look at it. Kira just kind of doesn't lean super far forward, but she just kind of, like, crane her neck a little bit to kind of get a glance at it. Are we talking, like, a crayon drawing, or are we talking, like, an actual good drawing? Hoping a crayon drawing. Is this, like, a detailed sketch, or is this, like, a scribble? <laughs> this is, like, a scribble, uh, a, hurried, a hurriedly scribbled message, like, because he was... Trying to remember it before I forgot what it looked like right mm -hmm. after he barely managed to get away in time. Sure. sure. So it's it's kind of a frantic little drawing. Yes. Um Gin the main kinda of hands you back the picture after they all look at it. He'll say, um Well, I am sorry to give you the bad news but this is not a creature that I have ever heard of in the jungles of this island. This is uh This creature is a stranger to me. It does, however, seem possible that this thing is perhaps native to the wilds. I can if tell you it was smart. It had a brain in it. That's for sure. This is not an uncommon thing dealing with fake creatures. They have a certain cunning to them that requires a delicate touch. It is not a creature that is common where you are from. It is entirely possible that it slipped through the boundary out of the wilds and preyed upon your father. Same way that you slipped in trying to find it. Alright. I'm tracking. So, that says to me, perhaps you might need to go back if you wish to find this thing. And at this point, um, Kira will speak up. Elder Nuro, I do not think that what you are proposing is entirely appropriate. We have given them their answers. I think that is quite enough, don't you? Get them in hold up a hand. And be like, a little courtesy, Kira, please. They may be able to help us. 
Kira just kind of purses her lips again. Mr. Barnaby. Yes? You and your friends. <clears throat> you are... Looking to help. Yes? As a, yep. a show of good faith. Yep. Can I mean, this is really quite inappropriate. They are guests on the islands. They want to help. I say we should love we, help. Should we mention about the thing? I think there are people I think we, we may not, to... not even have to. <laughs> yeah. I'm wait, wait it out. If it needs to be said, I'll say it. Sure. We have been having a little issue with the Fae of late. I hope it has not been too much trouble for you if you have had any unseemly happenings during your stay here. But the people of the island have been uh, at the mercy of a local Fae for some time now. We have an arrangement with a being called the gatekeeper. <gasps> she watches over the boundary for us. In return, we make regular offerings of other kinds. As long as it's not a human sacrifice. Does John say that out loud? Oh, no. no. <laughs> What kind of offerings? That's that was, that was not a character. I was just like, as long as it's not a human sacrifice. <laughs> well, of old, it was of a more spiritual nature. You burn foods, incense. You leave the occasional uh, full-cooked meal out in the woods waiting for her to come take it. Those were simpler times. In the past couple of months, something changed. She has begun asking for company. Are we the, oh, sorry, no, I'm not gonna say it. Are we the company? Are we the company, man? <laughs> Company of one time. You can tell. You can definitely feel at the rest. Like every other figure at this table right now is like stock still, just watching Ginlamine say all this, like wide-eyed, tight-mouthed, like very, very on edge. Got to pee real quick. I'll be right. <laughs> <laughs> That's definitely Ken. <laughs> Just give it for one second. Sprint out. Okay, around the corner, there's a there's a little room with it. Okay, he's gone. Well, now we just stand there in awkward silence. <laughs> <laughs> so really nice robes you have. Oh, thank you, thank you. They are uh... custom made, I, I would assume. Actually, they they are uh, heirlooms handed down oh. over the over the years oh. from uh, previous elders. This one I think was like made it. 200 years ago, something like that. 210. Yeah. 200. You must take really, you must take really good care of it. It's surprising it's lasted this long. Yes, we are uh, very very careful with the uh, items of this Thank nature. Uh, welcome back, <laughs> Mister <laughs> Mister Barnaby. Thank you. So. The gatekeeper begins asking us for company, a visitor. First we are say, okay, irregular, but interesting. So we talk amongst ourselves. We reach out to some trusted individuals we know. We send a man Young man named Dotto. 
He goes into the woods. He does not come out for nearly a week. And when he comes back, he has changed. Quiet. Sullen. He does little more these days than sit in his home and smoke his days away. Whatever she did to him, we are not eager to see it repeated. So a month passes. We begin to receive requests for companionship again. And this time, we refused. Since then, she has been uh, less than pleased. And we have begun hearing stories of disappearances, precious items missing, broken and defaced property. He looks over to Lorne. And we are... Why is he looking at Lorne? Wait, he's looking at me? Uh, no, Lorne. Oh. The okay. priest. The priest. Lauren and the Lauren. I, like... I thought he just suddenly started looking at Lauren out of nowhere. No, he, he, he's looking at Lauren, the priest, when he says the, the defaced property. You know, we thing. should recruit Lauren to our party. So we have a Lauren, Lauren, Barnaby, and Burberry. I will fucking kill you for that if you do that. I will drop <laughs> rocks from the sky on Noel's head for the suggestion. Don't test me. No, no, no. You have to do it on somebody else, but because if you did it on Noel's head, that's. One less person that has. I will kill everyone nickname. in this party. If you but John, kill me, the one syllable I can survive. If you kill me, my next character is going to be named Barberby. Barberby. Bird and Barbum. Barbum and Bailey. <laughs> Fucking fight, y'all. All right. Anyways, <laughs> getting back in character here. <laughs> Trying to wrap this up. Uh, getting them involved. Kind of come to his, his conclusion here. We have been stalling, shall we say, trying to find a an alternative. But we are certainly uh, strapped for ideas here. The only thing we can come up with, really, is to confront her and attempt to uh, force the issue one way or another. Because this... We will not allow to continue. John looks at Noel and just kind of like raises his eyebrows. To tell you the truth. I will say... hmm? oh. To tell you the truth. No, I was just gonna... Oh, go. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what are you doing? Who is truth what are you doing? first? Oh, no. I was gonna say, you guys are just gonna see a Lauren looking kind of like excited over by our table because she's like we're gonna go in a jungle i'm gonna see uh, a jag why <laughs> so it's all that's what she's excited about yeah so she seems like a little like Ooh, i'm gonna see a jag wire cool let's do this <laughs> she's not really she's just kind of going for it at this point um Hi, boy. anyways i was just gonna say uh tell you the truth Aww. we have uh heard some of these things in our investigations. Have you? There have been rumors uh, just about some of these events that have been going on. He'll just kind of glance over to the other elders at the table be like... And they just kind of nod. Even the name, the gatekeeper, was brought to us just this morning. Is that so? We told you that we found the tools that had gone missing from Lauren's uh, uh, worker. I, I don't know what you call her. The shrine's yeah, artist. Uh, Miss Pedas, yes. Uh, 
the we have a lot more context now. Uh, the they were taken as a form of retaliation from this uh, warning. gatekeeper, a warning of sorts. Part of a larger campaign, I suppose. So you found the culprits, then? We were even fortunate enough to speak with them briefly to learn some of these things. And they wanted us to pass a message on to you. Mm. I had to practice their tongue back in uh, homeschool. <laughs> it is probably... One of these days, Mr. Barnaby, we will have to talk more about you and your story. <laughs> because the more details that come out about you, I the more agree with that. I am. Um, yeah, uh, I just told you it all. A lot of stuff. K Kira at this point will pipe up and she will say, Well, you cool. certainly sound, seem to have uh, involved yourself in this, whether we like it or not. What does the gatekeeper's agents have to say about this? It's probably nothing surprising to you. And now that we have context for it, it makes a lot of sense. It's, she just told us to tell you that things will escalate until demands are met and by the end of this week or by the a week from today uh things will escalate if it's not if you don't capitulate within a week yeah. basically what did i tell you he looks at the rest of the table um kira just kind of sniffs and marakian has steepled his fingers again thoughtfully this is I have, I have a question, if I could. Please. I, I know it might be insensitive or prying, but have you tried to get more details from the person you sent the first time? It may clear up some idea of what's going on. Like, if he wasn't actually hurt or injured... Toto's encounter with the gatekeeper is not uh, something that has been made clear to us, but he, whatever transpired, was clearly badly affected by this meeting. We believe that there is some manner of fair magic involved but we are not exactly sure what it was that was done. But he is certainly not the man he was when he left. I see. More than that, all we have been loath to press. It seems Understand. a distressing topic. So we have let the matter down. Another question about the company. Is like there any specifics that she wants with the company, or is it just anybody? Her wording was very uh, vague. As I say, she asked for company and did not elaborate. I believe something has happened in the jungle. Whether the gatekeeper is under some manner of duress by another fae creature or uh, has succumbed to some manner of darkness herself, I do not know. But this manner uh, of conduct is very irregular. We have been at peace with the gatekeeper for decades, centuries even. It has been quite amicable for as long as I can remember. This is new. And this is not okay. And for my part at least, I will not be sending any more of my people into the jungle to be preyed upon by whatever it is is happening out there. This is not the way. So, uh, how about as we go? Please. Well, I'm sure will she myself, but... will, will she kind of a big smile on one person. I don't think you give her the option personally. <laughs> uh, K 
Kieran I mean, is very taut face at this, but, but Marakian is slowly starting to kind of nod along with this. If we can resolve this peacefully, I mean, that's the best option. But if we can't, we're able to handle, handle ourselves. All the better. Right. Peacefully is peace. preferable. Marakian will finally pipe up. I would prefer that we not upset matters with the gatekeeper if we can manage it. If it comes down to it, Merakian, I don't think they will have a choice in the end. It will depend on her more than anything. I suppose you're right. Well, what do the five of you say? You are? If you are so willing to help the island, are you perhaps willing to assist us in this matter? Honestly, I think this can probably help us out with our goal as well, so... Um, though I would ask that we have access to the person who went beforehand, just so we can get an idea of what we're getting into. They kind of glance at each other. Um, we'll try our best not to press too hard, but if he's willing to talk to us, at least we can try. See if we can get an idea of what's going on. I think perhaps a short conversation can be had. I would not want to trouble the boy too long. Get It'd probably be speak up. easier for him in private as well. I would agree with that. Probably so, it's only one of us. I have a question. I say Noel. Yep, Noel. Oh, well, I, I'd be happy or to the try. Two, like, it could just be the two pretty ladies. There we I go. Also How about like that? Go. Worst comes to worst, I can't calm him down. Possibly. Okay. I could see okay. Noel in Burberry. Well, Lauren will just go find a drag wire in the wilderness. <laughs> We will find you your, you your cat. Um... <laughs> I'm gonna go find my cute cat. Oh man, could you imagine if Fey Jaguars just looked like house cats but massive? Oh my god. I love it. Oof. <laughs> uh, I, I do have a question for the elders. If okay. you are asking for our aid, I believe the group seems somewhat amicable, but. There has been a lot of secrecy on this island, and we have been met with some roadblocks while we've been here. Did anything that you or your people do somehow alter the agreement you have with the gatekeeper, maybe without you realizing it? Did you change something? And this is their response. Ginleman will kind of straighten in his chair and he will directly meet your eyes. On my honor, as elder of this island, I swear to you, this was unprovoked. Whatever is going on with the gatekeeper happened on her side of things. We have carried on as we always have. I swear this to you. I believe on my you. life. Inside check. Go for it. <laughs> Can I also do insight check on that? It's a okay. double face. <laughs> yeah, that's not that great. Um, Use your inspiration. Yeah, this is probably a good time for it. Just in case. I rolled an 18. Oh, it was, 18. It was worse. I, yeah. I don't know why I ever used my inspiration. It was just, I, it's always like five points lower. Uh, 14 total for, for now. 14. <clears throat> he definitely wants to impress upon you that he believes this is on the gatekeeper um, maybe it's too forward for, I don't know how you feel about that but like he he, he seems very earnest um, okay. and I mean looking around the table the rest of them are nodding along as he says this um, but they are at the very least unanimous in this I'm just trying to uh, avoid a like, we go talk to, we go to fuck up the gatekeeper, and they're like, actually, they were cutting down our forest. And it's like, well, shit. Now we gotta go back and burn down their house. <laughs> yeah, <Fuck>. exactly. <laughs> okay. I appreciate your forthrightness. Yeah. If you're going to be involved in this matter, I think it's important, perhaps, that we put all our cards on the table. 
Am I not wrong? Nope, don't answer that. Am I wrong? Well, I, you can I answer did that. Have, I had one small question. Uh, so, we're actually not the first people to try and look into this, and uh, apparently the Gape Watch that you had tried to look at this previously, and they wanted to talk to you, you didn't talk to them. Was there a particular reason for that? They kind of look at each other. When... Just kind of lean and start whispering. Oh, I'll pull up the log. They were turned away at the door, right, Aloran? And I'll, I'll open up a page, and I'll be like, well, we have documentation, if you're curious about the date. He'll, uh, Ginlamin will take take the log and kind of look over it. Hmm. What was I doing that day? Haircut. I was going to say getting his nails did. <laughs> <laughs> there, there, there is some kind of whispered kind of confused sounding conversation on the side of the table and he will kind of close the book and just hand it to you guys and just kind of sadly shake his head i am sorry to say i i, I do not have any recollection of this uh incident that is mentioned here whatever happened it, it was not uh did not make it back to us well, i imagine not they're both missing Unfortunate. They went into the jungle. You you have expressed Which... to us how dangerous these jungles are, and we are capable. But is there anything stopping us from simply being lost to these woods, as well, like so many before? When you are ready to uh, strike out into the jungle. We can give you directions to the gatekeeper's watch. There is a place in the jungle where the boundary is thinnest. This border realm is where she holds the most sway. As long as you stick to the roads and follow our instructions to reach her watch, you should be safe. But do not wander out into the jungle too far from the path. Do not follow any lights that you see out there. Jaguar. Sorry, sorry. I'm, I'm, <laughs> never mind. Please ignore me. <laughs> if it is a jaguar. Are there a jaguars? Or if it's not a jaguar, Lauren might just faint from happiness. Oh my god. <laughs> I want to see one so bad. <laughs> if it is a jaguar, I would advise that you either look bigger than you are or you put someone between you and that jaguar. John okay. chuckles. <laughs> Good turn it. Uh, well, once I see it, I can become a jaguar and then it'll be an epic jaguar battle. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know, Lord. I'm fairly certain we'd have to pull you off the floor first. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> They're just so big and cuddly. And then she'll just kind of like... <laughs> zone out with them. Um, she good? Is she uh, good for this? Uh, uh, <laughs> she, she's a druid. What do you expect? <laughs> I'm about to go into some mystical woods, man. This sounds like a druid's dream, man. Let's go. <laughs> I want to see some shit. She like cracks her knuckles. She's like, "Fuck it, baby." <laughs> <laughs> Show me the woods. She'll okay. be just fine. When she calms down. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. She's basically going to be a kid in a candy store who just got his allowance for the next three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, back us up. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like uh, we have uh, we have a plan. So when uh, do you expect you will be ready to make your play? What time is it in? today? It's like noon. I say we talk to the person, get a good night's sleep, and go out tomorrow. How long of a trip is it 
to visit this gatekeeper. To my recollection, it can be done in a day and a half. To get there? You will be turning off of the road to Bolanon and striking into deep untamed jungle. Oh, okay. uh, it's a very that rough path, but as I said, it is treacherous. You will need to be very careful. Weary of danger. Camp for the night and... For Jaguar. You should be able to reach her watch by midday tomorrow. Not tomorrow. Day after tomorrow. I'll just... Can I, like, initiate a huddle with the group real quick? <laughs> One moment. <laughs> okay. Please. I think it's so, fine that we want to do this, but are we are we getting anything at this point out of it? I mean, we're <laughs> I see a talking to, wire, so we're talking to someone that's deeply familiar with the face, so they'd probably be able to answer Barnaby's questions about the monster. Is there a question that so, wasn't answered, Barnaby? The monster. Oh, okay. I mean. They don't. They don't really know much about out out in the forest too much. So they they found it. They might. They might know anything about it. Who knows? Maybe maybe that person is it. I just don't know. Um, if we want to make our odds better going into these woods, Adlar has come up many a times. I think a conversation with him would be wise at this point. But I think that if we were to do it, he had like a, a task he wanted done. That was one of the, she'll start whispering. Like, the greatest. Um, what was the task? Uh, or it was we like, we never did it. It was. Um, it was to shake someone down again. or something like that. Yeah, it's like a shakedown. This is out of oh. character so the elders don't hear us talking about the <laughs> shakedown. This <laughs> is like shake down a dwarf that owed, owed him money. It was pretty shady. It was some shady shit. Also, another uh, thing to think about is uh, if uh, they've been taking stuff lately, maybe there's a little stockpile about out where uh, where that stuff's at. That could be. A I don't tiny. think. I think they've literally just been leaving it all in the bottom of the tower. Which, by the way, once we settle the uh, the gatekeeper thing, they said we were free to take any of that shit. And we haven't told anybody where it was at. It's not really ours to take, but <laughs> for what it's worth, I, did, what? I didn't call this huddle up in regards to money or monetary reward. I just wanted to make sure we were doing do this for want? a reason. I want to see a dragon. Uh, out of character. Island. Out of character, so we can settle the storyline and move on to the next island. <laughs> out of character, sure. In character. In character, so we can fulfill Barnaby's wish to find out about the monster. That would be nice. And get some sweet booty. I wouldn't mind meeting some Fae. That sounds interesting. But I swear to God, if somebody's getting old lady shagged, it's Barnaby. Mm. Oh. I'm pretty, wait, wait. Oh, Lord, were you alluding to being shagged when you were asking about the company? No. <laughs> oh. I, I was curious if that's what she wanted. <laughs> It certainly I was like mildly it. curious. All right, I'm like... gonna unhuddle us. <laughs> also, I mean, one <laughs> other thing we could just do... go down. One other thing we could do is just hmm. say, like, "Hey, uh, if we do take care of this situation for us, any kind of reward." I would, I, I would rather not shake them down for a reward. If I, I think, think if we complete that's... it, they'll give us a reward. I, I think if we don't say anything and we can play it, they'll probably give us something. But I have a come... bad... If we ask for it up front, I have a bad feeling that we're going to just not be in their good graces afterwards. If we do, I could agree with that. Take me the way. <laughs> I, I, think, I think we should just leave it as we're helping them. And if they don't give us anything, we take all the booty in the in the tower. Ooh, perfect. Alorna, please. <laughs> 
given the moral ambiguity of most of the things that have happened thus far, I would say it's probably better to not ask for any reward ahead of time anyway. Just in case it turns out that these guys can't be trusted, and then the gatekeeper is actually the good guy, and then maybe we, it, it's, it gets so complicated so quickly. Let's let's just agree to do it, and we'll figure it out as we fly along the legacy of our pants, like usual. All right, Noel turns around. We'll do it. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> They've just been standing like at the edge of the table, just like waiting for you guys while you're huddling. Uh, <laughs> And yeah, Gidlam just throws his hands up very excitedly. It's like, fantastic. Well, I think we finally have a solution uh, that works for everyone. You succeed, the gatekeeper problem gets fixed. You fail, we have plausible deniability, and we fix it somehow other ways. No problems. Plausible this is perfect for everyone, <laughs> right? Good. Uh, he is just like clapping all the other elders on the shoulder. They are looking a little unsure about this Wait, plan are we his... supposed to tell the, the gatekeeper that we're there for a company? No, uh, no. so here, here's, oh. here's my thinking. You know, you, you are going up there, you are big strong heroes, you are saying, you know, uh, we hear stories about the things you are doing, we do not like it, make it stop, and gosh darn it, if you don't, you know, we'll do something. I don't you no, just, you're, you're threaten her. No, 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 no. No, a lord like no. no. <laughs> No, no. I, I just, thought we were just... being. I thought we were being sent as the company for appeasement, and I, then if something weird happens, then we can fight back. I would feel uh, uncomfortable feel like... sending you in that capacity. I would say no. You are, you know, competent mercenaries, uh, strong types who can handle yourself. You go in, you you negotiate a, a, a change of uh, change of behavior of some kind. Ask her what she wants. If if she wants something else, if you can give her something else, great. If not, you know, uh, don't, are we allowed uh, to negotiate on your behalf? Um, you are negotiating as um, uh, the party delegates, good natured uh, champions nice of justice. Citizens. You know. You're, you're, you're here for the good, the good kind of thing. You're, you're, you're heroes, you know, adventuring types. You're here to, to Inter stop. Are we an intermediary? Is that what we're I, being? I think, I think what I'm trying to get at here is that, you know, the more distance that we have uh, here uh, in the Elder House uh, from what you are doing, uh, independently of us, you know, uh, the better things are for us if things go badly. So we're um, a neutral third party. I think you are a concerned third party, you know, who is looking for the best solution that involves uh, less of this uh, human sacrifice situation that is being asked of us, you know. You've been trying to help. You have heard these troubling rumors. You decided to go and look into this and, and find out what is happening. You also have interests in Fey Manor, you know, sort of things. So... I, I trust that you you can you can find a way to to make her stop somehow without uh, implicating us. You know, if you if you have to implicate us in the end, I suppose that is unavoidable. Then we'll figure it out from there. Ideally, as I said, this is resolved without uh, it coming back to us and you failing miserably and dying. That would be uh, ideal that you do not do that. So if you do involve us, don't die. Okay. We'll make sure to involve you then. <laughs> <laughs> I would hope dying would be also, you know, lower on your, your list of things to do. You know, uh, surviving this, this encounter is, is a higher priority. Look. I think I think we understood where you're coming from. I just I like to not. walk away now, please. Can we go? No, no, well, no <laughs> Lauren's just being a stickler. Lauren's walking very subtly towards the exit, just okay. slowly, like I'm gonna go. John <laughs> just this starts is... ushering Noel out. Come on. <laughs> this is tense. He's being I so like cagey. <laughs> Oh, they're being so cagey, but we need to talk about we that. We realize they're being cagey. <laughs> well, we gotta go anyway, so just whatever. <laughs> they're not gonna tell us shit. <laughs> like, no. We can go talk about it elsewhere. 
I think we're leaving. I, I guess we're we're okay. saying our thank yous and goodbyes at this point. Sure. Uh, as as you're saying your thank yous and goodbyes, um, Gidlibin is going to try and and collect himself so that he he can actually string a sentence together. Um. So whenever it is that you wish to speak with uh, Mr. Doto, uh, please come back. Let us know. We can uh, arrange for that meeting. And whatever it is that you need um, to help us, uh, help us help you uh, achieve this goal, you know, please let us know. And we will do our best to facilitate here. I think we are hoping for a positive outcome on all sides after all. So, you know, whatever we can do to assist, I would prefer to over simply throwing to the wolves or the gatekeeper, I suppose, as this, as it were. We will do our best. But keep me posted. Include whatever business you need handled, and um, get back to us. We look forward to hearing back. <laughs> Take care. So, everybody out. Back mm -hmm. into the summer square. Out the front door. Uh, and yeah. The day is yours. Where's the party's head at? Alora wants to go speak to Adlar. But she feels like before they try to do that, they so do the shaking down thingy. Why don't why don't me, Barnaby, and Alora go talk to Adlar and Noel and uh, Burberry go talk to Guy Got Old Lady Shagged? <laughs> Doto? Doto. Okay. I did. All I remember is Old Lady Shagged. Just... You've, <laughs> You've been saying that. You've been saying that. It's my theory, okay? Alright. He's got mental scarring from getting Old Lady Shagged. Uh, yeah, that seems like a good plan. Okay. So. That elder that was speaking to us a lot. Because I didn't uh... know how to spell his name. Ginlamin. G-E-N-L-A-M-I-N. -N. Oh, I was one can you, letter off. Can, can you just send that in the chat? Yeah. I'll I got B-E. All right. Let's add it to the character log. So, yeah. Uh, Elders of Gladon. I believe I got that. Quote. You have uh, Rakian, Kira, and Ginlamin. <laughs> Look over at... Uh... Burberry. I'm like, you got that one elder really pissed at you. I mean, if she's going to point fingers, she shouldn't be upset about getting caught. I, all of that was silent. I just wish she was staring daggers at you. <laughs> I think she's trying to warn Barnaby about stuff. And she goes, it's rude to talk in, or cast message in front of other people. And she's talking about us all in Elvish. It's right, really. I mean, it's rude to whisper about us in front of, uh, in front of us, and yet they did it too. No, they didn't say anything important. Thankfully. <clears throat> There's four elders there. Not three. Uh, yeah, the fourth one did not speak. We never got a name. Yeah. Okay. She was very much uh, just kind of observing. Much, much, much older woman. Um, like gray hair. Um, just kind of sat and listened for the most part, observing. Throwing rocks. That's what it is. Glass houses. Hmm? Throwing oh. rocks at glass houses. All right. Well, um, I guess we'll wrap there for the session. Just pick up next time just outside the Elder House. Um, that leaves us with MVP and support points for the week. Uh, so, MVP vote. Barnaby. Because it's his quest thing we did. I vote Barnaby because he was the only one I could talk to the people. Barnaby. Also fair. Oh yeah, without Barnaby, that first segment would have gone way worse. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, that was been a little... I'll take it. How handy to have the enemy's tongue in your party. Mm, yes. Uh, and so kind of slimy and wiggly, though. <laughs>